Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brothers and sisters, we bring you an impromptu video this week on the subject of Muhammad Abdul Abdul Wahab, heretic or hero. There have been numerous discussions in recent times, and very recently on the uh, on the internet with various prominent Islamic YouTubers. Those affiliate, affiliated with the Salafi, or more accurately, the doctrine of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, in accordance with the Saudi Alliance scholarship and other personalities, and other prominent uh, personalities rebuttaling them. Without delving into individuals personally, there are certain common themes that we've identified that we think require further clarification and rebuttal from a more fundamental point of view. To summarize the arguments of the Saudi camp, or as is often known, the Madkhali camp, Rabi Madkhali being the prominent Saudi assigned government scholar, with whom uh, our resident scholar, Professor Muhammad al Masri, is quite familiar. The recurring themes are as follows The insistence on what is referred to as the pure kid of the Salaf, of the Salaf and an alleged consensus on the following What constitutes Salaf? What is the Akida? And an assumption that ruling and accountability, any forms that rebuttal the current incumbent rulers, by necessity falls into a category of khuruj. And they bring certain evidences, or at least part of a picture of certain evidences, to build a narrative that automatically anyone who has a counterpoint of view or vocalizes a counterpoint of view without even uh, any kind of physical action is by necessity a khwarij. And by building an, an identity of uh, consensus around this, they often tenuously dismiss people as Khawarij, and by extension, their words are no longer valid. And other other kind of other kinds of wraparounds they put on that is also the concept of Mubtadi. The modern, ironically, the modern Saudi state owes its its actual origins to a form of Khuruj, and the original religious justification provided to the Saudi straight was a state was the Wahhabi doctrine. And hence the, the, the reason for the title of Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab, hero or heretic, is really around the fact that if you look, hopefully by the end of the, this video, you'll find that that description of being a Khwarij is actually more appropriate from Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab. We've prepared this piece to further elicit discussions and to clarify the misconceptions. There are many numerous, uh, there are many days that we, 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 we appreciate and we certainly follow. Um, Muhammad Ibn Abd, Muhammad Hijab, Riyadh Muslim, Ali Dawa, and Bro Haji, among others, have provided some very good rebuttals. And their counterparts, Sajid Lipman, Shamsi, Ustad Abdurrahman, and Salafi Publications, we feel are not quite addressing the issue adequately and have provided a narrative which we don't agree with, which we certainly think this is the junction for us to rebuttal. We hope this is just a, the beginning salvo and we are more than open to open discussion and facilitating any kind of discussions directly or on other people's media channels. Um, and before I hand over to Sheikh, I'll give a brief introduction as to, the, uh, as to who Sheikh Professor Mohammed Al Masri is and his background. Professor Mohammed Al Masri is a, uh, has been a was previously a professor of physics and he comes from a lineage of scholars. His father uh, was a contemporary of Bin Baz and his scribe, and his grandfather was the Imam of the Haram. In the 80s and 90s, he formed a group to account the rulership of Al Saud, called the Committee of Defense Committee, the Committee of Defense for the Legitimate Rights, CDLR. Um, he was unfortunately uh, exiled from Saudi, well, chased out of Saudi rather, and seek, uh, sought asylum in the UK and has been a very prominent activist in the UK. He has produced quite a number of books, uh, books that are being published in English as well as in, uh, currently in Arabic, on some very fundamental issues and has really clarified a lot of fundamental issues which were taken as, um, as dismissed by the Saudi government scholarship because it's not in their interest to entertain these kinds of issues. And the material that's been produced we can say with confidence is very strong and reaches the level of Mutawatir in terms of the evidences that are referenced. Um, however, we will publish those links, but without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Professor Mohammed Al Masri. And Professor, you're familiar with, with the current uh, dialogue that's been happening between uh, these various camps. Yeah. Um, 
what is it for, to, to, to start things off, what is your understanding of what constitutes a Salaf? And this insistence on Akida, isn't that a good thing? Is there a consensus on what constitutes Akida? And is this something that is something no. which we should aspire to? This is uh, what they what they call Salaf and what the definition of Salaf is uh, is relatively late. Uh, it, 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 it was used casually, like for example, we have uh, one uh, one hadith uh, narrate, narrating scholar of, of high level of uh, authenticity and exactness in matter of, of narratives and, uh, and also personal piety he was doing uh, doing ribat doing uh, guarding at the border of the romans and uh, and so on uh, but he was uh, quite negative to some scholars because he's kufi he's from thaqafi origin he was negative to other scholars and did not want to, to sit with them and so on because he said they attacked the Salaf. Actually, they were attacking Muawiyah. That's what he means, Salaf. So the word like that has come Salaf, like this, the pre previous generation, the past. Uh, the, uh, that's similar in, in, the, in Christianity. We talk about the disciples or the apostles. That's something, something like that. But it was not made precise. And nobody declared himself Salafi, not even Ahmed bin Hanbal, etc., until we we uh, we came almost to the fourth century when the first one called himself himself salafi is abu tahir salafi one of great hadith narrator so it became like a title so it's, a, it's an obscure term salaf meaning the, what, what have been passed predecessors what's the definition there's no no clear definition if you ask them they say the three good generations according to a hadith that the best of the of the human uh, species of my race are the three my, my uh, these uh, my uh, my generation and then the one for the follows and the third to follow and uh, some narrations say he mentioned four some say say three so we can agree on three definitely that's 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 the that's the first one then when things are scrutinized a little bit it turns out that the third generation is having so much divergences and points of view, <laughs> even worse than what we have now. So they escaped to Tabi'in, second generation, meaning generation, meaning companions, the one who met or saw the Prophet, etc., with even obscure of definition. We'll come to that. And then the one who followed them called Tabi'in, which are themselves ranked in various great Tabi'in or Mukhadramin, the one who reached Jahiliya. But they missed the Prophet, they did not meet him because they embraced Islam later or they were far away. And this is called Muhammadami. Then we have the, the uh, elder or a senior Tabi'in. That's the one who are uh, born just maybe time of Abu Bakr or the end time of the Prophet. So they cannot count as companion or uh, okay. And then we have the middle Tabi'in, the one born, uh, roughly uh, born around the time of uh, the end time of Umar. And then the under middle. Uh, which are born about the time of the end of Uthman, and then there's minor Tabi'in, which are born like in the 50s Hijri and so on, like uh, like uh, 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 the famous one is uh, Zuhri, Bishab Zuhri, is, is a minor Tabi'in because he met at least and he got from Anas ibn Malik, so he's a Tabi'i, a minor, with the lowest generation age wise. But also, these have various disagreements and various conflicts and various tyrants and various things, so they escaped to the Sahaba. And then you have the problem with the definition. Who is a Sahabi? There was no clear definition. Even even the the Tabi'in and the Sahaba did not have a clear definition. For example, Sa'id ibn Musayyib was regarded as the best and the great of Tabi'i and the most pious. And maybe in Hadith science more exacting. I would say Sha'bi is more exacting in matter of narrative and more sharp in knowing men. Of course, Sa'id ibn Musayyib is more, more pious and more pure-hearted, but more straightforward. And to know the men and criticize them and analyze them, you need to be a little bit more a man of, of political insight and analysis of personality. So Shabi is superior. Shabi say, I took from a trustworthy source and mentioned the name of the source, then you can realize really trustworthy. He scrutinized him thoroughly. Oh, this is a human being. He may made, made a failure here and there, sometimes a mistake here and there. Uh, Saeed Ibn Sayyib is regarded in the same category, but because he's uh, someone who is straightforward and trusting, he may be misled or fooled by someone thinking he's trustworthy, which is not. That's depending on how to analyze men and their character. But I'm just mentioning that as a casual information. Uh, Saeed Ibn Sayyib say a Sahabi is the one who uh, stayed with the Prophet one, one year or two years or participated in one or two battle campaigns with him. So he regard anyone, anything less than one year, anything like less than one battle campaign as not enough to be a Sahabi. That, that, that will create a problem for many with regard to a Sahabi. 
many of the, uh, plenty of narrators of people who are not uh, according to the definition. Some people say, no, he must have attended at least three battle uh, campaign, etc. Some people say it has to be a resident of Medina, like Anser Marcus asked, uh, is there any Sahabi left because he stayed until high age? I think he maybe he outlived that Hajjaj. Maybe he died 95 Hijri in high age. So they ask him in high age, is there any Sahabi left? Besides you? So no, no, there's none except maybe some Bedouins. So he didn't regard them as Sahabi. They saw him Bedouins, but they are not Sahabi. So for him, you have to be accompanying him in Medina for a certain time. So that's again the definition of Sahabi because we, we know by from the statement, if, if we choose, choose any definition whatsoever, they will be under the Munafiqeen by the clear and fundamental text of the Quran. In Surah Tawbah, you cannot deny that unless you deny the Quran. But the Salafi do not mention that. They sweep it at the Kaaba and say, Munafiq is not a Sahabi. But according to your definition, some of them, so Tawbah says clearly, وَمِنْ حَوْلِكُمْ الْعَرَابِ مُنَافِقُونَ وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ مَرَدُوا عَلَى النِّفَاقِ لَا تَعْلَمُهُمْ نَحْنُ نَعْلَمُهُمْ سَنُعَذِبُهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنَ ثُمَّ يَرَدُّونَ إِلَى عَذَابٍ عَظِيمٍ From the people around Medina, this is Munafiqoon. And from the Medina people themselves, they are who are skilled, مَرَدُوا Very skilled, very deep in Nifaq. You don't know them, Muhammad, we know them. We'll punish them twice in dunya and they will be returned to enormous punishment, meaning they will die kafir. And the Prophet did not know them. And those in Medina are most likely interacting with We know some of them by name. One of them, at least, is Abdullah ibn Ubayb Salul, who is known as a Munafiq. Nobody, but he, he participated in the battle campaigns. He initiated the story of the Ifqa, the attack against Asha, all of this. And he is the one who said in his private circles, now that's the end. We, are, we adopted Muhammad and gave him protection and make him fat. And now, according to the old saying, make your dog fat, he will eat you. Meaning Muhammad is a dog. And he denied that saying that, but the Quran exposed him. So... We have that, so there's no escape. And sure, the time, and there's various mutawatir ahadith. But as I mentioned, this point just just to put the Salafi in the corner first, that even your definition of Sahaba is not clear, not well established. The Prophet says is in all record, not in one hadith, not two, five, six ahadith, calling Munafiqeen as so my, my, my companion. Even the hadith about the those who plotted to kill him in Aqaba on the way back from Tabuk in the ninth year. Few people saw the Prophet took the high mountain way and asked the army to go the valley and said nobody should take the high mountain way except the Prophet. And he took it. Why? We don't know. Maybe he wanted to be supervising what's going on, seeing what's going on. And that way is very narrow, cannot accommodate for anybody. So there was uh, someone sent in the army calling. Nobody should take that. That that way is only for the Messenger of Allah. Some Munafiqeen thought that they had good opportunity that we pretend we did not hear or we heard, and then we go that way, about 15 of them, and we push him over the ridge and get rid of him. And uh, the event is witnessed by Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman and Ammar ibn Yasser. So that's a well known famous event, well established, narrated by Tawatur. And then uh, uh, the Prophet uh, exposed them. And uh, I think Hudayfa or Ammar struck their, their camels in the face so they uh, went downhill and so on, and nothing has happened. And then he uh, uh, told Usaid uh, ibn Hudayr, the one of the, 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 the leader of Aus, uh, this, this happened. And Usaid says, very simple, send someone to their tribes, say, so you know them, say, yeah, I know them. And uh, even the Hudayfa or Ammar knew their camels, so they can be identified. And uh, sent an order to, to get to get the next truck. This is an assassination against the head of the state. It's high treason. The truck. And the Messiah said, "No, I'm not going to do that." Obviously, because it's prohibited to do that. It has. It will have the result that the people say Muhammad is killing his companion. Or said the said, "But they are not companion. They're monastic." Was insisted again, repeated. I am not going to kill my companion, meaning your, your claim that they are not companion is wrong. The word companion fits on them. So the companion is kept in the Arabic language meaning. Arabic language means someone going with you on, on, a, on, a, on a trip is a companion. Some, your wife is your companion. Sahibata. The Quran says about the mushrikeen claiming that Allah is have a consort, is a companion. So he kept it in the linguistic meaning. So all these definitions are wavering and do not bring anything for, fruitful. The reason they are wavering about it is very well known. We know that from various historic reasons, especially Ahmed bin Hanbal and so on, his statement about Muawiyah. They want to get Muawiyah to have the honor and the protection of companion, but they will not succeed. That's just a prelude. So Salaf is not well defined, and even the companion is not clearly well defined. Secondly, okay, say they say 
the Sahaba were around the Prophet and uh, they saw the revelation of the Quran, etc. Hmm? And uh, they are most of them, except a few which do not count five, six, seven, who don't, are not eloquent Arabic speaker, uh, Arabic speaker. So they understand the Arabic language better than us by nature. They are born in Arabic language. We, we have to learn it by effort as a foreign language for us now. I mean, the high Arabic, the Quranic Arabic, even myself, my the language I came up with is a dialect, not the high Arabic. So I have to learn the high Arabic as if it's a foreign language. It's easy, obviously, because the dialect is close, but still I have to learn it. But the one born in it, it is done in his blood. He has the taste of it. So based on that, their understanding must be, must be the best of understanding. But again, a fallacy. Based on because understanding is related to certain, not only understanding Arabic and being with the Prophet, is related to the certain mental and intellectual capabilities. Not everyone is having fiqh and depth of understanding. And we have many evidences that many of the companions were quite simple-minded and very shallow. It doesn't, it doesn't stain them because their virtue is being that they are early in Islam, especially the Sabiqin al-Awwalin, Muhajir al-Ansar. Secondly, they are sincere and they are willing to sacrifice their life and their wealth for Islam. That's what gave them the virtue, high virtue. Not that they are better understanding. And evidence show that. I'll give you just one example, just casual example for the listener. They don't know these things. For example, in one hadith, very a hadith, Ibn Abbas casually mentions issue related to Khilafah and election and so on. He says we were in 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 uh, in, uh, in Mina with uh, with Omar in his last pilgrimage before he died. And someone and I was imagine Ibn Abbas who was just coming out of age when the Prophet died because he was just coming out of age. We know the other narrations was teaching Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. Abdul Rahman, the big, the big companion who embraced Islam very early in Mecca and was the one who mediated for Shura in the time of Uthman. We are now in the time of Umar. We did not yet get there, but Uthman, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf is counted on the top companions in any count and his badri, everything, top. Still, he did not memorize enough Qur'an that, that he needed to be educated by, 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 by a small boob like Abu ibn Abbas. So it is not, it's not, uh, this is a fallacy. But also the Prophet in his final sermon said, those who have this, uh, heard me, they should report what they heard as they heard it. May Allah make the face beautiful with the one who hear what I say as it is and report it as it is to other people who are not present here, or including people in the future, because maybe someone receiving the message comprehend it better and make sense better of it than the one who hears it now. So even that refused that. So this is the fallacy. Secondly, what's meaning the Salaf, the idea, the point of view of the Salaf? Because they have, we have absolute evidence that they agree, disagreed in many issues. Some of them very substantial, like for example, disagree, disagree, initial disagreement between uh, Abu Bakr and Umar about fighting the Murtadin, certain type of Murtadin, not all Murtadin. And uh, it came to a dispute until even until even Abu Bakr held his head, shook him, said, uh, "Are you tyrant in Jahiliya and a coward in Islam? I am not going to let those who do not pay the zakah get away. I am going to fight them until they pay. Uh, it's not tolerable." And Umar then caved in because of the authority and the character of Abu Bakr. That's all. But they had agreed in such a substantial point, and there is many other disagreement. So what does mean the point of view and the, and, and, and the teaching of the Salaf? They have various disagreements, even in such important point. Fighting someone and killing someone is a fundamental issue. Bloodshed is a, is a serious issue in Islam and in any religion and in any society. So, so what do you mean with, with what the Salaf has adopted? The only something which makes sense is that what they agreed all of them as Ijma'. Let's assume Ijma'. If you check, you will not find Ijma'. Almost in nothing except with Qat'i from Islam, which nobody disagrees through Islam. Any Ijma' of the Sahaba, if Sheikh, the Ijma' of the Sahaba, genuine one, which is well established, and also narrated by Tawatr, because you have to be, to be sure that it's well established, and if it's really Ijma', then many people must have reported it, and it's not Ijma'. It is few people making a fatwa maybe in Kufa, and the people in Yemen are not aware about that, so it's going to be called Ijma'. Result is that, only the Qat'i of Islam, which there is no disagreement. Actually, only those who prefer to get out of Kufr and uh, depart Islam will not will, will disagree. So it doesn't give, uh, give us any any uh, advice or the, or direction where to go in, in issues of, of differences in fiqh 
and secondary issues of Akbar, what they call Aqida, which is again a false you know, no, name. So, in reality, if we scrutinize, because the one using the word Salaf most commonly, the Wahhabi, or the, they call themselves Salafi, they don't like the word Wahhabi. But really, there are other Salafi who are not Wahhabi, so they, they should be called Wahhabi. And Ibn Taymiyyah, who is definitely not Wahhabi, and more open-minded and wider than Abdul Wahhab. Abdul Wahhab is, is not a good student of him, separated by generation, but he grew in the school of Ibn Taymiyyah and became even more extreme. He uses Salaf as an argument with those called the theologian and the, the discussing philosophical issues. As, as, an, uh, as, a, um, uh, as a, a tool of intellectual terror. And essentially what he means, what he invokes, is points of view of Ahmed bin Hanbal. So all the Salaf collapsed into one man, Ahmed bin Hanbal. That's the reality. So this is all deceptive. These names are deceptive because they sound very nice. The predecessors, uh, all people think the previous, and you know, people have a tendency to nostalgia. The past was good. If you ask most people in England, how it was the time of your fathers it was much better. We are now suffering. Prices are high. At the time, you, you the benefit, you the, the weekly benefit was have been like in the. I was here in the seventy fifties. Some relatives and they have neighbors, English neighbors living on benefits. The benefits were like five, five pounds per week, and they were living lavishly more than today with a benefit of hundred or hundred twenty per week. So say so it was we lived for five pounds and so on. People are nostalgic, so they always imagine that the past. Because the, the present is having its problems and the suffering. The past had also, but it's forgotten now. And only the nice thing remaining, the nice memories. Nostalgia. So it appeals to that. It appeals to that. But there's nowhere in Quran or Sunnah any praise for the previous one. Most likely, there's usually a dispraise or disapproval of the previous one, like the Mushrikeen saying, we are following the ways of our father and grandfathers. And the Quran says, even if, if the revelation coming to Muhammad from Allah is more guided and more rational than your grandfathers and fathers, even if it brings you better things than what you have from there, and they still insist, stuck to that. So even you could say, going back to the Salaf and sticking to them is actually not the spirit of the Quran and Sunnah. Yeah, but what about the, uh, narrate, the hadith which talks about the best of me are the ones after me? Uh, the, the ones That's what I said. That's what I said. Best generation, the whole generation. But in the generation of Rabbi Salaam was also a, a group of the worst tyrants in Islam in, in, in human history. Abu Jahal and so on, the Pharaoh of this Ummah and so on. His uncle Abu Lahab, big criminals in his generation, meaning the whole generation as a total. And what makes them be, uh, best? As I stated earlier, what makes the Sahaba especially, that's the one meant obviously. He doesn't mean the Kuffar of Quraysh. Definitely doesn't mean the Kuffar of Persia and, and the Roman Empire. Definitely not. They're not the best of human beings, but the best of, of generation time past who follow the prophets. That's, that has to be restricted. But let's assume the best of all humanity, fine. What makes them the best? Because they have the uh, thousands of companions who accelerated to Islam and they will, were willing to sacrifice wealth and life for Islam. And they were sincere. And the Quran tests all these aspects when comparing the Quran. He doesn't mention that they are more intelligent and more sophisticated, have better industry. That's not what makes them better. What makes them better is these features. And these features are not related to matter of understanding the Quran and Sunnah or, uh, or uh, uh, claiming that what, what they have stated in certain situation is the correct, uh, is, is, is the correct statement. No, not necessary. They could make even mistakes in jihad. In even various places in the Quran, there's a rebuke. Even the Badri, we regard the cream of the cream, Sabiqil Awalin, the first to accelerate to Islam, up to the day of Badr, are called the Sabiqil Awalin, which are promised paradise unconditionally. Yeah? The cream of those are the people of Badr. Even the people of Badr have been rebuked because they gave the wrong advice about the issue of, uh, of uh, taking, uh, uh, taking ransom for, for the detainees in violation of the injunction that ransom should not only taken after the enemy has been crushed down. And they gave the advice because they wanted the booty. They wanted the, 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 the money coming from, from the ransom. And the Quran rebuked them in Surah Al-Anfal. They said the badri at this and that. And he said, you, you want the dunya. You did not give the sincere advice because you want the dunya. This is the badri. So they could have, uh, even in this matter, some failing. So it's very important to recognize and, and uh, putting a Sahaba in this light to everyone 
makes it feasible for Iran to strive, I can compete or come close to them at least. But if you are them like angels who have come down and you may ask yourself, do they really, where are they going to the, to the toilet? Were they defecating and urinating? Yes, they were. Maybe maybe the defecation was smelling like, like musk. No, it was smell bad. <laughs> like ours. So this way they come closer to us and we can really strive to come similar to them in piety, meaning in sincerity and willingness to sacrifice wealth and life for Islam. That's what's so, interesting. So it has nothing to do with the intellectual issues and discussing the explanation of ayah of Quran and Sunnah. No. So, so, so basically, you just to recap, so you're effectively saying that there isn't the things that they agreed on were already qati. They disagreed on loads of issues of fiqh. In terms of uh, comprehension, they aren't necessarily the oldest would have the strongest comprehension. I, I, give, you, However, I give you two examples for the comprehension. Two, uh, two examples uh, for, for the, 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 uh, the faulty comprehension in certain situations, which should not be. Uh, there was something in the in, in the tribe of Ash'ari. The Ash'ari tribe is the one joined the Prophet when he was in Khaybar. They embraced Islam. They joined Ja'far coming from Abyssinian. That's in the, in the beginning of the uh, sixth year, I think, at the beginning of the sixth year, yeah. uh, end of the sixth year, beginning of the seventh year, when the Prophet finished with Hudaybiyyah, neutralized Quraysh, then he got Wahi and marched toward Khaybar. So he went immediately to Arab Medina, he continued to Khaybar. Fine. Uh, he was communicating with the Najashi to send uh, Ja'far and his companion who were staying there about 15 years as an Islamic reserve and also carrying da'wah there, carrying da'wah to India and China. Many people do not know that. And on the way, they, they joined with some of the tribe of Ash'ari, Ash'ariyin. Not the Ash'ari, the, the ideology. That's the, uh, uh, someone who from the tribe established that Ash'ari ideology or theology. No, it's the Ash'ari, the tribe. They joined together and they came to, to, to Khaybar. And the Prophet was so elated to see Ja'far that he asked the Muslim to give them some of the booty, etc. All these stories are known. One of the personalities, something in the tribe happened which you should have prevented from happening or commanded good and evil or something. I don't remember what has happened. Maybe the narration, narration did not mention. And the Prophet asked him, why didn't you do taghir? Why didn't you change the munkar? And the man answered, because Allah said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ مَنْ ضَلَّ إِذَا اهتديتم. Or you who believe, concentrate on yourself, you will not be, we mentioned that in Tafsir, by the way, it will, it will not harm you, those who go astray, if you are guided. And the Prophet was angry. He said, where did you go lost? How can you be lost in understanding the ayah? And he said, oh, look, Arabic, Arab, Arab man, and a believer, and the one who uh, just, just arrived after Khaybar, so he participated in many battles after that, possibly in the conquest of Mecca, etc. It, this is for the kuffar because the word dal usually means getting out, getting of the way into kuffar. Nobody, unless you have other evidence that means making a mistake. It is making, so this is for the kuffar. It means the, the, the kuffar going astray will not harm you. Just focus on your iman and establish your iman. That's the meaning of the ayah. So he did not understand it this way. Another, there was some munafiqeen who left Medina, broke their immigration and joined the, the hostile kuffar. And they were they're passing in uh, under a covenant to security with someone who has a covenant with the Medina. And the Sahaba uh, were disputing about what to do with them. Kill them, not kill them, because they joined the Harbi Kafir. And the was silent. And the Quran rebuked them. Why disputing about the Munafiqeen? They joined a, a nationality or, or a citizenship, which is Harbi, then they are Harbi. Now they are passing there with a covenant of security, and they have the covenant of security. Just apply to them the same law of the citizenship they belong to. How is the problem with you? Why are you disputing about the Munafiqeen? It should be obvious. So there's two events, and many other events like that, happening at the time of the Prophet. So it's not a not matter of government. So this is a fallacy, but it is present in such a way, the companion. There seems to be angels. Coming from heaven, this is from another world. They don't. They were not living in the earth. Maybe they're not even walking. Maybe they were flying in the air and things like that. But and sure, this way, you have thing. an imaginary picture of something which is not real, with the with the purpose intent to pass my own statement and my own jihad, or my own uh, misconceptions, as the one coming from the salaf. Uh, in reality, it is not coming from the salaf, and even if it's coming from salaf, it must have been, have been disagreement about that. Sheikh, but here's another thing. I mean. There's one thing about fiqh. What they tend to corner the market on is around the issue of aqidah. So what they're, they're obviously, they're, they're aqidah, bidah, shirk, 
and obviously okay. offshoots of that grave worship. But this is the, the thing is this, so by building, so obviously for us, belief is a fundamental component, you know, to be a Muslim, one of the fundamental uh, arkan, having the right belief. So they just obviously- Actually, the, actually the, uh, the Rukun is again, there's a fallacy which develops through history and the people swallowed it down. The Quran never, do, uh, the Sunnah never talk about Aqeedah, talk about Iman. Iman is not just a Aqeedah, a, a, a set of reports which you, you, you believe they are true. No, that's not Iman. This is Tasdiq, or this is Yaqeen. And this is, has nothing to do with the Iman itself. It's the base of the Iman. You have, you have to do Tasdiq on things which have come from Allah or dictated by necessity of reason, but that's not. You have to accept it and make your life according to it. Then you, you, then you are mu'min. Before that, you are just musaddiq. Example, read the Quran, when it talks about the people of Pharaoh. فجحدوا بها they rejected rejected what Musa had brought واستيقنتها أنفسهم there inside their soul they have yaqeen they have absolute conviction that's this the truth but they reject it we're going to follow Musa or we're going to follow a couple of slaves and their nation is slaves under us which we can slaughter and kill as well and take the woman whatever for servants and whatever and, and then two of those come and claim to be messenger of God and we're supposed to follow them no that's what they said Although there is tiqan, so separate that. So even though we use the word aqidah is wrong, let's say it's a convention, scholarly convention. Okay, aqidah is that what the heart has been bowed. Aqidah from uqda, from not the heart is not enough. The is convicted about that. That's not enough. It, it has to be more to become iman. But let's go to that. What the heart should be noted ab about? Is that what Allah ordered to know with certitude? And the Quran says clear, clear. No, for certitude, that's only one deity. No institute that Allah knows everything and is comprehensive in knowledge. Uh, is capable of doing everything and is comprehensive in knowledge. No institute this and this and this. The Quran did not leave it open. And in another place, he specified what should be believed on. For example, وَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِاللَّهِ وَبَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسِهِ وَلَوْمِ الْأَخْرِ قَدْ ضَلَ ضَلَلَ Who ever deny Allah his, his books, his messenger, his angels and the day of judgment, الأخر, the last day, he has gone astray far away. So these are the, the main portion of Iman. But nobody disagree with Muslims there. So they, they, they got stuck or got involved somehow in secondary issues of uh, uh, related to some khabariyat. Like for example, what's really Allah created the heavens in six days and after that he mounted the throne. What does it mean mounted? Some people said it can't be the physical reality because Allah is uh, is outside as a space. He cannot be located in one place. Uh, that's impossible. Because if he can be in a, in a place, he must be in every place. Otherwise, he's not necessarily existing. And then they indulge in these things. This is maybe a philosophical discussion. should not be a matter of aqidah. Yeah, maybe scholars can discuss that in academy. But you should not even ask Muslims, common Muslims, to, to have an opinion of their say. Just, just take it as, as it appears. And if you have a mental image, whatever mental image come in your mind, like someone sitting on a chair, that is just your, your limited imagination as a human being. And you are forgiven. Allah phrased this way so that you can have this imagination in your mind, but know Allah is different. But that's enough for common people. How do you drive to that conclusion? So, for example. You know, for example hmm? how, do you, how do you derive that? Because they, they build a narrative in terms of this is what you must know. Muslims must know this, they place a key down that, all that's this kind a, of stuff. Well, that's it, that's it inventing. That's not what the Quran made an injunction. If, when if did it, they get to that if point? It, if, that... It is, if it is, let me give you an example. If it is reported in the Quran and you come casually to it, for example, that the wife of Al-Aziz of Egypt uh, tried to seduce Yusuf. This is a fact. The Quran says it's a fact. She tried to seduce Yusuf and he almost fell, but he recovered and ran away. Fine. If you say, no, that's not true, you are a kafir because you have declared the Quran to be false. But is that part of the aqidah? Should they stand in the door of the mosque and ask you, do you know what the wife of Aziz did to Yusuf? No, 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 I don't know. Uh, then your aqidah is false. You know, you're not obliged to know that. But if you come casually, fine. You don't put that in aqidah books. Even if you check their aqidah books, it doesn't mention this. Or they should be in that according to their definition, part of aqidah. They got stuck in problems, which their ancient scholars, especially Ahmed bin Hanbal and cohort, were not qualified to study because they're people of hadith and narration. But they gave certain answers which are most likely false 
and they wanted to make that a deal and declare you are Muqtadi, you are deviant, you are this, you are this. That's it. That's what they wanted. That's what has happened historically. That's what happened historically. So that's what they can. Now, if it comes to shirk, now the Wahhabi is having the, the tool of shirk. And the main thing which they have, they, they, they differentiate themselves from Muslims, and starting as the, the problem started with Taymiyyah, but not that extreme and sharp. Not like, a, it, it was like a knife, but it was not sharp yet. Not sharpened enough to, to, be, to be deadly. But even Abdul Wahhab sharp that went to the extreme. It followed the consequence to its end. So he's, he's, he's consistent with himself more than Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah is wavering and contradicting. The conclusion is that, is that Ibadah, what is what is what is a certain list of acts. Like for example, the Wahhab will tell you for me that greeting the banner. Who oh, she would know you, when the banner is lifted or the national uh, anthem is, 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 is sound for some in England, people stand, for example, there's a certain procedure and they sing with it. Or if you see the banner, especially if you are a member of the military, then you support to give a strike, put like this and give a certain greeting. They say the following. Standing in front of the banner in a specific way, showing respect and so on, is, a, is an act of ibadah and you are worshipping the banner and you are a mushrik and a kafir. So the act of, the, what they call act of worship, or this ritual, they declare it to be ibadah and if it is directed to someone else beside Allah, it is shirk akbar, shirk akbar, and you are out of the whole you are a kafir. So it's clearly a faulty definition of ibadah. Because they, when they get to sujood, they got stuck in the problem of sujood. That the people, the, the family of Yaqub, where there's a prophet under them, who definitely is not a mushrik, made sujood to Yusuf when they entered Egypt. They say, oh, this is sujood of greeting. How come that sujood is one time greeting and so on? Well, what makes it greeting or not greeting? And they got stuck. If the definition of ibadah is fundamentally for, for faulty. And based on that, they invented what they call shirk al qubur These people are worshipping graves. All 85% of Pakistani are brave, and the brave worship grave, they are kafir, all of them. They're mushrik. Mushrik kafir, out of order of Islam. Based on the faulty definition. So even that, they missed. And their definition result really in kufr. But we don't declare them kafir because uh, the, the fundamental principle is that if you have a certain point of view which necessitates kufr, doesn't mean that you are a kafir because you, you that that maybe you know you're not aware that it necessitates kafir. You did not do the necessary logical steps, but it. But I, I am at liberty to tell you your point of view result necessarily in kufr. because if you do worship like these acts, meaning if you direct that act to the banner, for example, you made the banner a deity beside Allah. That's it. It made that became mushrik. Mushrik meaning you adopt a god beside Allah. La ilaha illallah. So. A deity is something which is worshipped. That's his definition. That meaning Allah was not worshipped in eternity before any creation, so he was not a deity in that. Which is the blatant kufr. But they never think this way. But if you show someone of them this way, they will stop and start wavering and knowing what they say. I hate to tell the people that your point of view is ending in kufr, but sometimes you are forced to say that. No, so even at that level, well. they are already blatantly wrong to the level of kufr. We're not saying they are kafir because they are simply too, too shallow and too ignorant to be declared kafir. They are not qualified to do these conclusions. So can you, can you explain a bit more? So for them, an ilah is something that is worshipped. And in the absence of it being worshipped, it ceases to be it's an not, ilah. It ceases to be ilah because the definition, al ilah. They, they, haven't, they haven't expressed it as such. Al -ilah, no, they have expressed that. Al ilah wal ma'bud. That's Muhammad al Hab said. And he said, and he lies almost, I would say he's lying deliberately because even Taymiyyah doesn't say that. And all scholars and even linguistic people agree on that. That's what he says. That's in the book of Tawheed, by the way. It's not an interesting part, it comes later. With a quote and the reference. And the books are everywhere. They cannot even hold it back and erase it from the books. So al ilah al ma'bud. That's its definition. Which flies, it's essentially giving a slap to the Quran because the Quran defines exactly what ilah is. In Surah Al Mu'minun, in the Surah Al Ayah of Tamanu. There are two types of ilah. And the ayah says, Mattakhad Allahum in Walid, Uma kana ma'ahum in ilah. Ida la dahba kulu ilah in bima khalaq, or la ala ba'du ma'ala ba'd. It says, Allah has no son. That's a report. There are other reasons to 
prove that Allah can, is impossible to have a son, but it's enough to see that Allah is reporting. You claim I have do daughters and children, offspring. I have no offspring. Allah walad. Walad is actually is more precise than offspring. It can be female or male. Allah has no offspring. And he has no reason to lie about his own offspring if he had. And there's another deity with him. Otherwise, the other deity will take his own creation and depart away. That's the definition of Allah. The one who can create and take his own creation and get away. Or try to dominate the other one. The one created by own internal capability and can dominate the others or shield them. That's the Allah. Or an offspring of such an Allah. Or offspring of offspring of offspring of such an Allah. Well, it's like a, in, in programming, you are a programmer, it causes the definition. It goes ultimately that the Allah is the entity which can create by its own power. Has his own creation, has in the dominion of, of creation, and can shield it and take away from anybody else or dominate someone else. That's the ilah. Worshipped, not worshipped, green, yellow, tail, not tail, is all irrelevant. That's the characteristic. In Surah Al Mu'minun, if you say Al Ilah is Al Ma'bud, you have taken that and put it in the bin. I'm using very, very, very harsh language so to shock the listener to think about that seriously. Would, would, would that mean, I mean, to, for for that to be an exclusive definition, wouldn't he have had to say illa? As in some way, some way to say that this is his exclusive definition. And yeah, la ilaha illallah. This... There's no deity except one, which is have in Arabic the name Allah. And also what in Aramaic, the name Allah. Sorry, what I mean is that by saying that an ilah is, a, is something that is worshipped, is that the exclusive definition? The only thing that he considered to be a construct to different. Yeah, that's define... it, and that's and that's the reason. Even he that's says the only thing he said. In he said he, of... said he says, for example, about about the 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 uh, the, uh, the the dome or the, the uh, on top of the grave of a Badawi in Egypt. He takes the Badawi as an example, which is very famous, and people go there and have celebration, etc. He says this is an idol. Fine, say. If you ask al Badawi for help on the, or, or, or uh, cure, etc., and so on, then you made him Allah, not Ilah, Allah. So you identified him with Allah. That's his exact word. It's the book of Tawheed in the Arabic one. This man is, 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 is gone in such a way that is, uh, bogs imagination. And is, is as unbelievable that people, but we will not wear uh, that time all, almost 100% illiterate, very few scholars. And he was able to 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 cooperate with one one guy in power who's sneaky enough and 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 mischievous enough to recognize this an opportunity to have someone who's so obsessed and willing to kill people and fight for that and can extend my power. That's Muhammad bin Saud. Muhammad bin Saud. Let me. I usually say in Arabic a very nasty language. He Muhammad bin Ahab is so obsessed that he sank to the level of donkey, and he was. He decided to ride that donkey. There's no doubt that the man is obsessed with the idea. It took all his life and all his imagination. Occupied him completely. And he got the opportunity of support of someone who regarded as an excellent opportunity. Let me give you a following story. When he arrived in Da'iya after he was expelled from Uyayna, Ibn, Ibn Muammar. Ibn Muammar also worked with him initially, but Ibn Muammar received a threat from the, from the Uthmani uh, uh, Wadi in, in Eastern region to whom this Uyayna and Najd was belonging. But it's a loose belonging. It's a Bedouin area, the central power in Istanbul and even the East region in Dammam or Dahran, now called Dammam and Dahran, uh, actually Qatif and, and, and Hufuf. They were not bothered very much, but it still belongs to them. So it's a part of the Khilafah of Uthmaniya. The Wahhabi usually denied us. So no, no, we are outside the Khilafah. We did not rebel against the Khilafah, but we come to that later. So he, the ruler of the eastern region from Hufu, wrote a threatening letter to, uh, to Ibn uh, Muammar uh, for one reason, because Ibn Abdul Wahhab is, uh, stoned an adulteress. She admitted and stoned him. Assume that's correct. No problem with that. But stoning and, and executing hudud is a matter of, of, the, of the government. So it, seemed, it looks for, for the governor of Hassa Ahsa that Ibn Abdul Wahhab and Ibn Muammar, they have usurped power and they are making a decision which should be made by the government, at least by the Wali or by Istanbul. Not here. They are, they are out of, running out of hold of authority. 
because you cannot like for example if you go if you go and list and detain someone putting in prison then you declare yourself from the authority you have no right to do that only the police which are authorized probably and established probably by the authority by the home office and the home office minister or or, or secretary is elected by the parliament etc in a well-known procedure part of the state you are not at liberty to do that you cannot do it you're not allowed the same there same into islamic entity or semi-islamic entity so that's the reason of threat, not a matter of aqidah. So he was not bothered. The one in Wolf was not even caring about that. He's caring about this act. So Ibn Abdul Hab went to the Riyya. The meeting with, with, with uh, Muhammad bin Saud, who took power a few years before by killing his own cousins and so on, taking power, like the habit in the tribal areas there, killing each other, taking power, and then writing to the local wali. Uh, declaring that I have top power and so on, sanction me and appoint me or something of like technicality. Went to meet him. And the following conversation, as narrated by a book, which is now printed and we have, have in our site, uh, so you can people can download it. Look at the sneaky question. He noticed that this man is obsessed completely. And he heard his stories in Ayayin. Ayayin in, 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 is not far away from the area, just uh, maybe... I don't remember, maybe 50 kilometers or something. I was living near the area myself when I was there. I told him, I hear that you came here and you won't have protection like you have been Muammar and so on, someone who can protect you and, and help in the da'wah. And you want to stay here? Say yes. I want to establish Tawheed and fight shirk and bid'ah and so on. Say, okay, that's fine, but there's a problem, Sheikh. You are a, you are a, a nasik, you are a pious man. A devotee, and we are sinners because we are eating haram. What does he mean? And he explains, I have some taxes, and he knows they are legitimate taxes from the people of plantations, and uh, because the area is, is just essentially palm trees. That the main the main income of the people they 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 have uh, they have dates and palm tree and some animals and so on, and they have a tax there, not a zakat, some extra. Just for my, for my, for my, uh, for my uh, treasure, treasury. And we eating haram. How can we stay in a country which is, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, the ruler is eating haram? That's exactly what he said. And even they, uh, and what make the story with this formulation more, more, more trustworthy is he is uh, written down in the dialect of Ahl Najd. We expect from an ignorant man like Muhammad bin Saud to be talking in dialect. He will not be talking in high Arabic, like some reports try to translate this statement in high Arabic. And they will say, no problem, continue eating haram as long as you support me to be defeating shirk. Continue eating haram. <laughs> so Muhammad bin Saud said, what a great gift from heaven. This man is busy demolishing graves and then busy extending my power. And that's what had happened from that day. Recently, by the way, although this is not an evidence, their ambassador here in London, you may have read the statement he said. He said, who said we have anything to do with religion? We are we are a tribe which won the wars, defeated the others, and could all things. Well, religion is just what was a tool. He admitted that statement. Yeah, we have nothing to do with Islam or Dohabism or any religion. We are a tribe which won the war. And this was translated and broadcast in the English media. So don't regard us that the guardian of Islam or anything. This is all, uh, meaning that's always fake. It was just, just to get. We actually won the war and to establish power and convince the population to obey and not rebel. Religion was a very good tool. That's it. Translated Sorry, this, this, this uh, Muhammad Ibn Saud, how, why would he make this quote if it's going to undermine him? Uh, Subsequently, so no, why, no, why one, of, that one of the students of Muhammad Abdul Wahab is reporting that. Yeah, but what, what in terms of him, what was his Machiavelli reason to even express that? To, to solicit from the man something. Okay, just to gauge him. I say you can you cannot see you are a, you are a, you are a, you are a devotee. You are a Nazi. You are a man of the of the Akhirah, not of dunya. But we are people of dunya, and we are sinner. We are eating haram. How can you stay here? Meaning, tell me something. Give me some solution. And the solution came. Does this tie into the mentality whereby, take currently, for example, al-Sal, they can round up people, put people in prison, 
every uh, river, Don't everything. Worry about that. As that's, 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 we come to that yeah, later. But yeah. I mean, that, okay. that's the founding of the state. When some people say, what happened? Some people, there's a fabricated book written, I think, by some Shia scholars in Iraq, claiming that Ibn, Ibn Abdul Hab himself is a British agent. And there was a, a British spy called Jefferson or something like that. And he has confessions. If you, the moment you open the book and read a few pages, it smells Shia, 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 Shia fabrication. There's no doubt about that. I can't even write details about that if necessary. But they know that. And nobody is respecting that book. Everyone is a fabrication. That's nonsense. The reality is this man is have been taken over this idea to the level of absolute obsession. He himself in his writing say, brothers, before... Before several years, I did not know any about Tawheed. I was Mushrik, all my thesis are Mushrik and Kafir, until I walk up to the reality and recognize the real Tawheed. He a business, yeah, about himself. The man is so overtaken with the idea. He's not a British agent or anything. The British agent may be Muhammad bin Saud, but not this man. He's completely obsessed that answering your question, is he a hero or whatever it is. He's mentally so obsessed that you could classify as mentally deranged, completely gone. And this man recognized Muhammad, this is a man who is out for power and government. This is a very, an excellent tool for control. But I have first to check that he will not interfere with my income and money and uh, illegitimate taxation, which he knows is illegitimate. It's not to everyone this type of taxation is illegitimate. And then he got from him this fatwa. And then the alliance was, was, was made. Based on uh, approving that, that will continue. Yes, you support Tawheed, meaning demolishing graves. And secondly, another condition, you don't leave here without my, my permission. By the way, the, a condition does not entail that Muhammad bin Saud cannot kick him out. The formation doesn't entail that. You don't leave without my permission. But there's no way I say, and I give you as a, a covenant that I don't kick you out. No, it's not even stated like that. But the man is so obsessed. That's just a promise. I support you. Da'wah khalas is enough for him. He doesn't see anything else. Just to understand the character of the man. He's not a British agent. He's just he's a mentally deranged person. Going to extreme until exactly like now Daesh. Because they have certain ideology in their mind. They, are, they, they, they can't be used by anyone. They are, they are blind. Dream is blind to you. Blinds you. Does not let you see, see the way. So basically, this, this whole insistence on shirk you've rebuttaled because of the fundamental definition of shirk. Yeah. It, the the Tawheed on... is there mm -hmm. in full in Arabic. The mm -hmm. part translated is actually only the introduction part, which because the, the reason for this calamity to happen is that his usul and the way he wrote, but you cannot blame him very much because at the time, in his time, Islamic scholarship was at the bottom. Islamic scholarship was increasing and advancing until, let's say, the fifth Islamic century, roughly with more elaboration and development. Then slowly it started stagnating and said maybe three, four centuries in the same level, up to Ibn Taymiyyah and after in the Hajar al-Asqalani and so on. Just, just so encyclopedic where collecting things, but nothing really creative. Even few creations of Ibn Taymiyyah are not that genuinely creative. And then after that started declining, genuinely declining until the bottom of the time of Muhammad al-Hab. So you cannot blame him that, that he is, you know, you know he is at the end of a declining period after a stagnation and after the development of scholarship, which was starting to become deviant after the time of Sahaba anyway. So you cannot blame him, but that's the reality. His usul, the way he looks at Quran and Sunnah, the way he reads at Quran and Sunnah, he reads it with, with, with half blind eyes. So that's the reason the book of Tawheed, we have these three first chapters, try to clarify the fundamental principle going to the bottom of the absolute necessities of 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 of, uh, uh, of uh, reason and perception, and also the necessity of Quran. Only the most fundamental and pressing necessities are depicted there. Then we discuss later than the evidences of prophethood and so on, and then rebut the issues of shirk and shirk al Arab and worshiping grave and so on. So well, the other thing that they kind of um, hang their appeal on is the issue of bidah and uh, bidah mubtadi. Um, and this entire insistence of having purity of deen. So there's creed, aqidah, and then there's the acts themselves. Almost oh, we, to the... We, we suppose that, because, because the, the aqidah, which is, every Muslim will agree, and which they're fundamentally established by Quran, and before that by the system of reason, is believing in Allah, His Messenger, they've judged etc. 
even the details of data so yeah they just include hell and fire and etc and, and and accounting that's part of the other that's essential that's it but all the details of us there are many hadith about details of of uh, how uh, accounting will be in yom al-qiyama uh, you're not required to believe in them if you pass on them ah yeah okay then you will believe them automatically because they they have good it's not they seem to be authentic that's it that's not part of aqeedah so, what they mean aqeedah is the, what we mean aqeedah is these questions these secondary questions about is the quran created not created uh what is the mounting the throne that's what they declare aqeedah and put it as a part of tawheed and play a game with that with the people and have a their mind you have when did this here. become an issue when did this become an issue and how do they are how how would you rebuttal that the, the their articulation that it is is an issue and it's because it's related to creed because, and all because kind of... clearly it was not the issue of the time that they, they claimed the salaf of sahaba they never discussed that because they understood that everyone understood his own way as according to his imagination. And they understood that they understood the general principle that Allah is different than whatever we imagine, but whatever we imagine is okay, according to our limited human perception. Full stop, stay there, that's it. They didn't need, they didn't have any need to discuss and, and go in this issue. Barely. There may be one and two issues related to what is the kursi and what's the arsh, one or two narrations, and that's all that is there. That's it. And nothing else about that. So there were, dis they were disputes about who is Muslim and a Kafir and what gets you of the fold of Islam. When well, the time of Sahaba by the Khawarij and so on. That was a dispute. That's the beginning. But not these what they call of Aqeedah. What they usually call of Aqeedah. Especially their own Aqeedah, which is the defining shirk and Tawheed and the divinity in a, in, a, in, a, in a definition which contradicts Quran. So that's, that, that's it. That, that's part of the problem. So, for example, take, take the issue. But, but of, since you say this is aqidah, and aqidah is more important than sharia, you have to have the correct creed, and the people confuse creed with iman, all this mixed up becomes then a major issue, which is not major. It's not even so, secondary. Okay, so the, so, so the issue that they make, they fixate on, like, for example, the hand, the kursi, there's no requirement at all to, to, to extrapolate that or to have an adoption on that. Absolutely no requirements. There's clearly no requirement. Do, when they use the word Muttadi, is it usually they, they they use it on the issue of creed and they also use it on related to actions? So, for example, Milad, birthday of the Prophet, various things yeah, based, of that nature. Based, again, on a fundamentally false usul that what whatever the Sahaba did not do, we should not do, which is completely false. Even the, whatever the Prophet did not do, we should not do because we're not doing is is nothing. Nothing cannot be evidence for anything. Nothing is. It's a fundamental logical flow. So I can understand, for example, actions. For example, to... when the Prophet does certain action and leave it, the only thing you can conclude that by necessity of reason and by the all overwhelming narration is that that what he has left cannot be cannot have been obligatory. That's all of it. It may be still desirable. He leave, leave, left it deliberately, may, uh, did it deliberately uh, leave it to uh, to show that it's not obligatory. It could be desirable. It could be play mubah. It could be undesirable, it could be haram. All these four. You have to have extra evidence for that. That's if he has done an act and left it. If he has done no act at all, like for example, he never he never uh, uh, planned or, or, or tried to, 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 to build a rocket to go to the moon. Because it was not given at his time. Can you conclude that building a rocket and going to the moon is bid'ah? Soon, no, I cannot conclude anything. Isn't you see, you see the fallacy when you apply it to such odd cases in normal mm -hmm. cases? They can't play, they say he did not celebrate his, his, his birthday. The only thing you can say for that, yeah, it's not obligatory. That's all. But if they frame certain things as being, but uh, as a matter of fact, he prays the Monday, as you say, this is about Monday, fasting Monday, because this is my birthday, that's the day I'm born. So hinting that the day he's born is a nice day worthy of celebrating by fasting or whatever celebration. Hinting, but he did not do. And also the Arab tradition, in the Arab tradition, there was no celebrating of birthdays, while other nations celebrate birthdays. So showing that it's, 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 it's simply, it's simply uh, uh, you cannot conclude from that. You have to have other reasons. Someone could say so, based on that he praised Monday, fasting on Monday, because he said Monday is the day I am born on. Uh, the man, man, uh, meaning Monday is a good day, we're celebrating with Siyam, but his birthday, 
is also worth celebrating because he made that a good feature of Monday. So you may conclude from that that it's maybe desirable to celebrate his birthday, even if he doesn't deserve. Maybe he did not celebrate it so that it doesn't make it came an injunction and burden to his ummah. Then they go through the excess, exactly like this case with the discussion going around Taraweeh between some Sunni and Shia, etc., or, or some Shia and Sunni. And as a matter of fact, he started Taraweeh and started even the masjid, and then more people came, more people came. Then he decided it's becoming dangerous now, so he stayed home. And they came, waited, uh, <clears throat> and started making sounds that we are here. He ignored them <laughs> at, at the end. Of, <laughs> and the last day, they throw even stone against his door. The Prophet was very angry. And he said, you all must have caused Allah to, to make taraweeh obligatory on you. I abstain from doing it in the masjid, so it doesn't make it become obligatory. When the best prayer beside the, uh, after Faridah is the one, the one who you pray at home. You see the point. And then people said after that, because of that, some people, Shia said, it's a bid'ah of Umar. No, it's not bid'ah. Because after the part passed away, there is no danger of it to become obligatory or any wahi coming. Khalas, wahi is gone, khalas. Now we can do the nice thing and bring the people and have an imam who is good in, with a good voice and reading and even having an imam for men and imam for women because the masjid was very big and they couldn't hear the imam but we didn't have microphones at that time or megaphones. So, so it's, it's not it's a very good act. It's a very good act. Just give you an example, the, 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 but the problem is the usul. Let's go to the fundamental usul. That he did not do something or even left something after doing. In, in the case of Taraweeh, is very clearly making Taraweeh in Jama'ah in the masjid, is because he was concerned that it may become obligatory on them. An injunction may come from heaven making it obligatory. And he did not want to have too many obligations in He wanted to make it easy in his ummah as much as possible. Like for example, the habit of Hassan was to do for every salat to do wudu. In the day of conquest of Mecca, he made wudu in the morning, in one morning, because he stayed several days before going to Hunayn to the battle. And then in Dhuhr, he did not make a wudu and prayed for that in Asr. And then Umar asked him, Messenger of Allah, you did something I have never seen it, you do it before. You did not make wudu for every salat as usual. Then as I said, I did it deliberately, Omar. Why did he deliberately? To show it's not obligatory. Because some people can say he was always making wudu for every salah, so the wudu is obligatory for every salah. No. There would be some dumb people like that. To break that, he did it one day, show it, it's not obligatory. But he prefers to do wudu for more purity, for more beautification, for cooling, whatever reasons. But it's not obligatory. You see, the fundamental issue, the usuli, they have faulty usul. They read this one hadith, conclude something based on, on face value. In another hadith, they conclude something. In a third hadith, they conclude something. And they don't put them together. And they don't go to a fundamental principle and usul, which is enshrined by necessity of reason and Quran and Sunnah. Like the same, for example, not only Wahhabi, but many of us, in the issue of, of basic uh, uh, ruling of permissibility. Sorry, can you elaborate on that? The basic ruling of permissibility, that the basic ruling of action, thoughts, and everything is permissibility. That's so, here, so, 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 for example, some scholars, I don't know the names, would argue that if you repeated a certain act and you incorporate it into your, 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 your worship and you consider it to be recommended or something of that nature, that makes it into a bidder. If you, if you make it recommended without any evidence. Without no evidence whatsoever, then it's bid'ah. But it may be not. Maybe you have certain ishtihad. Like, for example, you 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 can very well celebrate the, the Mawlid of the Nabi. Say, yes, it's not an Arabic tradition. He did not celebrate, uh, uh, celebrate it for whatever reason. So it's definitely not obligatory. But he praises Monday being, say, that's a day I am born in, meaning a day of born is a blessed day. If the Monday is blessed in the week, then the day he is born, or supposed to be born because the day that people say now is almost certainly the wrong day. I have some work on that, but that's not our issue today. It's almost certainly the wrong day. But still, they assume it is being the day and they celebrate it as an occasion. I say, the Prophet praised that and regard it as a blessed day. You can celebrate. So as long as it's framed in the, so in the format that. 
because you have an argument. The other one is purely the, uh, 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 making a, 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 a which with absolutely no evidence. Like for example, taking the, that Prophet usually make wudu for every salah, which he showed that is not obligatory. Say, it is even better and more desirable and closer to Allah to make ghusl for every salah. That's bid'ah, because there's absolutely no reason for that. No even one hint. You see my point? That's it. That's bid'ah. But the other one is not bid'ah, because the possible point of view and the argument is actually structural and well, well established. It's a good argument. That the Sahaba did not do it, it's not their tradition. So they, were busy with, 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 they were busy with jihad, it did not come in their mind. It came in mind with the people later. So this fixation about bidah as being, well, firstly framing something as bidah and then making it such an overwhelming issue, which almost, you know, overrides shedding Th blood. This, this, this is an indicate a, 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 a mentality which is going extreme in religions, which is very destructive. And the Prophet prohibited that in an occasion which is shocking. You know the story. Now let me repeat the story. In his in his final uh, uh, pilgrimage, just a few months before he died, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, Ibn Abbas narrates that I was uh, he was and Al-Fadl. Al-Fadl is the brother of Abbas. Uh, and also another, I think, uh, uh, Osama ibn Zayd ibn Haltha. They were mounting behind the Prophet in exchange. Sometimes Al-Fadl, sometimes Al-Abbas. So <laughs> taking turn. It was my turn when he arrived in, in Muzdalifah, said Al-Abbas. And then when we sit down, you know, in Muzdalifah, you sit down because they depart and camel back. And in camel back, you don't have a traffic jam because camels were skilled to go up with the mountain and so on. And the number was also limited at that time. Nowadays, if you depart with cars, you get stuck. You, reach, you are happy to reach Muzdalifah before dawn. <laughs> you will not get any opportunity to have a nap. But at the time, they went. So we settled there. And before going to sleep, I think, or after waking at Fajr, I think before going to sleep, as a precaution, he told him as select for me uh, stones so and so much, most likely for every day. He select for Mustalif because the stones are this small and nice. So it's a sunnah to select for Mustalif. Mustalif, but you can select from anywhere, but in that place. And then as I selected small stones which are like the size of chickpeas, very small. And I put in his hand. He was amazed about. It. How why Ibn Abbas shows it? We don't know, but as he shows it, this is maybe the right the right size for nice management and putting a big number in a bag. I think that maybe that's it. And the people around him also, we in the pilgrimage, people are around him continuously to learn from him, to get advice, to get instructions, to get guidance. And they felt that it's maybe the last pilgrimage. So they have to get opportunity to soak as much as possible from the knowledge coming from heaven through him, alayhi salatu wasalam. So he turned the stone. And then to the people say, بِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَرْمُ Like with this size, do stoning. And then he make a statement which seems to be shocking, seems to be unrelated to this small size of stone. وَإِيَّاكُمُ الْغُلُوْ فِي الدِّينَ Don't go extreme in devotion, in deen. Deen here means tadayun, being devoted, being religious. Don't go extreme because the previous nations were destroyed by going this extreme in deen. Because you may think, I am going to stone the devil. Because so stone so so shows hostility and hatred more. Mm. We take a big stone. And the next time you take a bigger stone. And the next time to pick even a machine gun and then you kill the people start starting around. That's it what develops. That's all of it would lead to your destruction. Couldn't you have a counter argument so to that in the sense that it's, it's the fact that people inc incorporate other rituals? Is what's leading to Hulu. So, for example, no, no, he, no, a, no, the argument is faulty. We have the hadith of Rasulullah. Now, now, now you show if they come with that argument, say we have this hadith showing what Hulu. He is saying clearly, with this size. And avoid the avoid and Nasadi say, avoid going extremism in deen because the previous things were destroyed. And the only occasion he said previously will destroy it is this one and another one that they they punish the, the, the poor and the lowly and leave the rich and the noble from punishment in the equation of cutting the hand of the Khuzaiyya uh, and he, uh, the, the Makhzumiyya and he said even if Fatima committed theft I will cut her hand and another uh, two other occasions about to destroy uh, another one is that uh, they were asking to their messenger going back and forth with questions and interrogations so their messenger that destroys nations. 
etc. There are four or five. You can you can even you can even search in in, in any collection of hadith and so on with the word قبلكم, the phrase. Then you will find four or five types. That's one of them. And the example given is clear. It's not inventing a new ritual. It's exaggerating the size of the stone. And we see the reality of that. Many simple-minded people from around the world, even from Arabia itself, but the, the Arabia, they tend to be a little bit better educated about that, especially Egyptian. They're very hot, uh, uh, devoted and so on. At, at the, the stoning site, some of them take their shoes and throw it at the devil. You caused me to divorce my wife. And just you need to mess with the shoe and hit someone in his head. You are lucky if you don't plug his eye out. And if it becomes a general habit of exaggerating everything, it will to destruction. Ultimately, it starts simple, but it grows because the mentality, the obsessed mentality, that is more pious. So in some, in some ways, this whole in, so a good parallel for this would another be example, the another example of that. One time in a battle campaign, the Prophet was fasting. Usually, he doesn't fast with a, or a trip in a camel, and then. The sun just sank, just barely sank, and the horizon is burning with light. And he said to the one driving the camel, stop and let us go down and uh, do us a, a drink. And the man said, it's still the sun. He said, stop, I tell you, stop. And they said, why you like, woe on you, stop and start doing the drink. Because the man think, I should wait a little bit, maybe five, two more minutes, two more minutes, that's more pious. And then it goes more and more and more and more and more until you continue until next uh, sahur, like some people try it. So this is fasting? Yeah, and fasting. And he told them, this is not, uh, so you, as you said, I have, a, I, I have a special, I have a speciality with Allah SWT. My Lord feed me something spiritual for him, but for you it's not it's off limit. And still some insisted and he fasted with them. Do you know how much, how much uh, wasal he did? He did it not only one night, did it seven days in a row until they collapsed. Don't do it, that's especially for me. But the people have this tendency, think it's more pious. That's all of what Dean comes. So the example of, uh, you, you know the, the example- Actually, their to... definition of bid'ah and bigger, it's sahaba did not do it. That's all of what Dean, that's going to extreme. What what a fasted Ashab did not do it? Who said they will do everything reasonable and nice until Yawm al-Qiyam? Who said that? What they did and excelled with the Quran said clearly. They are truthful, they are spending, they are sacrificing themselves the cause of Allah ahead of everyone. That's what made them like that. Not anything else. That's it. Read the Quran from A to Z. You have to go back to the Quran and read it. You have to do the number of the Quran. You cannot just rely on one hadith here, maybe one of uh, uh, the hadith, maybe even faulty, maybe be not narrated completely. Go to the one which is completely protected the Quran from cover to cover to have these more fundamental issues clarified in your mind. You often give an example of uh, the man who came into the masjid and the hadith which talks about the masjid of shaitan. Yeah. Can, you, can you explain how this kind of relates to this? Because that, because on this subject oh, this, of this uh, is what I call a, a divine drama or divine comedy, like uh, the one of Dante, but it's not a comedy, it's a drama. Uh, you can call it comedy if you want. Anas uh, and can narrate various channels. So m most of them are weak, but if you put them together and analyze them, you you come to the conclusion that must that the story must have been authentic for a goal. So we were at the messenger of Allah for some time, and. Uh, we were talking about, and then we mentioned a man who is known for extreme piety and was participating in jihad, it's not only here. And we mentioned he did this and then, but he said, yeah, I, I, I don't know him. I'll go to your prescription. I don't remember that man, I don't know him. Just let me comment here quickly. That the Prophet I don't know him, meaning he does not attend the halaqa of the Prophet He's not gaining knowledge. Make a note on that. And Allah put it as next textbook. Then why we are discussing this man in this time, he looks like that, his beard is like that. The man came from far away, go to the masjid. Most likely the Prophet was sitting on the side of the masjid or outside, not in the front. They have a place of sitting near the people of Sofa in the back at that time. Let's assume that or at, at the entrance there. 
far away from the end. The Arab messenger, this is the man we are talking about. He is, he is coming. And he came. First looked at him, say, this one. I don't know him, but I see in his face the strike of the devil. Shocking. That's because the prophets have spirituality and receive wahi. The others do not see. See only the external work. And then the Prophet want to teach them why he has a strike of the devil. So when he came close, he said, Salam. The Messenger of Allah said, I should look Allah, I ask about Allah. When you came close to this, to us, to this group of sitting people, did you think in your mind that you are better than everyone here? Maybe excluding the Prophet. Maybe the others, at least. Let's assume that. Let's, let's give the man a bit, a bit of benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Unlikely that he thinks better than the Prophet, but... And the man who is truthful said, Allahumma na'am. By Allah, yes. Now we know what the son of Satan. He's arrogant. He's looking down on his Muslim brothers. I do more. I am doing more in the battlefield. I pray more. Then he proceeded. He, does he sit and ask why you are asking me what's going on? Why this strange question? No, no. He doesn't need. He knows everything. He has everything already. That's, that's his behavior. Show that. Otherwise, he would have to be sitting. Imagine you get the opportunity to, to pass at the Messenger of Allah with people sitting and he asks you such a strange question. Wouldn't you sit and say, say Messenger of Allah, why are you asking me this question? Strange question. What's happening? Is something wrong with me? No, he didn't. He continued in the masjid, to the front of the masjid, maybe behind the wall or or, or curtain or something. Most likely the Prophet was, at, was in the back at the uh, people of Sufa. People who are living in the masjid, doing Quran and so on. And the Messenger came to the people there, Abu Bakr and Umar were there, and Ali and so on, a few others. So it was really an important gathering. Imagine, he thinks he's better than these, including Ali and Jazeera. Possibly even including the Prophet. But let's say, we will not go to that extreme. And he said, put the following, following, uh, following uh, a strange command or request. Say, who from you will go and kill this man? Hmm? Man is not warrior. He didn't say anything. Kufri or something. And they know that the Prophet all his life. That must be late in in, in time because Abu Bakr also reported that, but in a mutilated way. So it may be in the ninth or tenth year, very late. And also Anas must have been mature and old, sitting with these people because he started serving the Prophet with ten years. Ten year old would not bother with things. Most likely he must be fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, quite late. So what happened? But maybe why? Maybe something exceptional. So Bakr said, "I will do it." I would go if you can. So he went. He saw the man playing. And then he hesitated. Said, I'm saying, Allah ordered. This is all a divine comedy. Allah producing it visibly. Because we, at the end, we know it is a divine comedy. He would not have been killed because he's not worthy of killing. Beware. But we'll hold on. He said, praying, say, How can I kill him while he's praying? The Prophet said, I'm not, I'm, I'm prohibited from killing the Muslim, the one who prays. Especially if they're in now praying now. If it's Musalli, meaning the one who prays generally, but this is the one who is praying right now. So he went back to the Messenger of Allah. I saw him praying, and you have prohibited us from killing a Musalli. And the Messenger of Allah said, You are not the one for that. You are not the one predestined for this one. Omar said, Omar said, I will do it. The rough, tough Omar. He goes and then pulled the sword, heads it down, we would dispatch with this man. He came and found Umar, found him in sujood. See, this is even worse. The man is in a sujood. The lowest, the lowest body position, honoring Allah, the exalted and supreme. Not only he's praying, and Abu Bakr hesitated. Abu Bakr is a good example. I should follow Abu Bakr. He hesitated and went back to him. He walked in sujood. <laughs> you are not the man for him. And Ali said, I let me go. But I said, see what Hasi said to Ali. Go. You will kill him if you find him. If you find him. And then he goes in. The man has finished and gone. Ali came back said, he's gone. Messenger said, there are people of this way of guidance, all of themselves, arrogant, looking down other Muslims, believing that they have all the knowledge. In reality, they read the Quran without digesting it. The famous hadith, that's the first occasion, or one of the cases. And they will deviate from Islam or from obedience and from the community. 
And if I meet them and say, I will exterminate them. If you have killed him, which is impossible by design of Allah SWT, with, he would have the first and the last of the Khawarij. But it's not the way of the universe. That's not the way the universe have been started at the beginning as a testing universe. Couldn't be possibly have been killed. If you have killed him, but it's if it's impossible, it's impossible. You could not have killed him. Because the, the history has to take away, and you have to be tested by Khawarij, tested by Munafiqeen, tested by your own desires. So you have to be tested. Now, tomorrow, and tomorrow, this these days, in our interaction now, tomorrow. There's no escape. This is Qadr fixed at the beginning of the creation. Unescapable. This so is an interesting prize of free will. Anyway, this show, this now we know it's a divine comedy. Allah exposing to them like, like an act in front of them. That man could not have been killed because he's not pulling the sword. That's number one. The Prophet ordering him killing by wahi, either knowing or Jibreel knowing or Allah, definitely Allah knowing that he will not be killed and these people will fail. And also hinting that the one who will fight Khawarij and if he finds them, it's Ali, not Abu Bakr, not Umar. And he's supported of another hadith. We mentioned it just to to give uh, to, uh, some 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 uh, some t nice taste to our uh, discussion today and to give Ali ibn Talib his virtue in this special regard. One time, I'm starting to say, one of you will be fighting about the ta'wil, about the proper interpretation of the Quran, as I fought about its revelation. Notice the word. It's the same way I fought about its revelation. One of you will fight about its, its proper interpretation, not about the religion. People will not deny the revelation, but they will inter reinterpret it wrongly. And the same, the way he's saying, like I fought Tanzil, we know the fought, fighting of uh, fought Tanzil is infallible and is the correct way to doing it. Giving a warning, sending messengers, doing this thing. We know that. We have that structure. We have even writing in this area, which will be finished soon. So Ali will be doing it the correct way in this regard. Not necessary in inheritance law, not necessary in matter of selling and buying slaves, which he has some fatwas which are almost manifestly wrong. No, in this one, he will be correct. So, Bakr, this is a great virtue that you will be the one fighting for the meaning of the Quran in the time which is misinterpreted. So, I said, is it me, my messenger of Allah? I said, no, not you. I must said, me. I want to be, have yeah, this great honor. I said, no. I said, who is it then? I said, the one who is fixing my, my, my sandals. And Ali was fixing the sandals of Prophet. Mm -hmm. Stitching it. Khas bin Naal is the one who do it. It's the same here. It's the one who here he failed to find the man because he could not find it now. That's not the time to be found. So it's also a projection of the possible future there, which the history have brought forward as a, as a reality. But uh, that the point here is not the uh, Irish virtue and so on. This is important by itself, but that is own standing. The point here is that the mentality of the man. He doesn't listen to the halak of the Prophet. He has the Quran. And he thinks he, he has digested it probably. You cannot taste the Quran just, just by reading the Quran alone. You have to refer the Sunnah in its totality, obviously. And even, even if you don't have a Sunnah at hand, like uh, uh, when Allah is addressing the Mushrikeen and the Munafiqeen about that, with addressing Mushrikeen and Munafiqeen, so they say about fundamental issues. What fundamental issues? The Quran is more than sufficient. With the provision, you read it and digest it. And you read it all of it. Apply it the Baron Quran. Do they put that about the Quran? Not an ayah or two ayahs. All the Quran. Then if you go through it, all of it, interconnected it probably, analyze it consistently, then it's enlightened in your mind. It must be of divine origin. There's only one divinity. There's a day of judgment. That's the address to the Mushrikeen and Munafiqeen. It's actually the very Quran interesting. Is Even. He, this, this he is, the... is, but he is now looking down. His Muslim brothers are not w willing even to sit in with the Prophet to learn more things which he need as a, a companion who is supposed to be carried the da'wah after the Prophet until the al Qiyamah. He's not doing. He did two not two observations there, Sheikh, if you don't mind. So hmm? one observation here is the fact that um, this person. So for example, you you previously mentioned about the Khawarij, how the when it when it says that it doesn't go deep in their throats. You you also you 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 made the argument that Sadr is. Deep conviction, deep, strong, no, no. solid. Sadr is the, the, in metaphorical because the Sadr is the is the place of knowledge, like the database, the storage. Heart is a metaphor for the center, the CPU, the processing unit, the consciousness, the mind, the also the associated feeling. 
and the way you conclude things and conjure things. And the knowledge goes in the Sadr. People think it's the physical one. No, it's the metaphorical one. And even if the Quran says it, it is, it is not, it is not uh, uh, the the uh, the eyes which become blind. It is the heart which in the chest, meaning the metaphorical heart or the spiritual heart in the in the spiritual chest. So that's what the Arabic convention and it, uh, uh, it fits with the like. For example, if you if you uh, detect, for example, or you do uh, you are programming, you are a programmer or, or uh, uh, doing doing computer computer issues. If you detect something on a way to to do a service or to connect programs, and uh, you feel you feel as if your chest is is elated. You feel uh, uh, like uh, ease on the chest. It's in here, but it, you feel the ease here. If you get a bad news, you feel the pain, you, know, you feel the pain in your heart. Here you feel it because of Vagos. But reality is here, I'm going. So this is the metaphorical one. So that, that reflection, what the people, even some people going to extreme think that really the, the physical heart is there and then obviously refuted by heart, heart transplantation. We know that. When you transplant the heart of someone who died, the one who received the heart remained the same person, the same character and so on. Barely anything yeah. from the other one will come. We know that, but that's actually interesting. So, for example, this but is a really good this, example. So that's the chest, the information. So when the person says "la it doesn't go down through the tharqa to the chest. It doesn't become knowledge, useful knowledge, sitting in the chest. It doesn't. It is just chewing on it. That's it. It is not digested because if it's digested, if you something goes through the throat to go down, then it's digested. And if it's digested, it comes back from the body. In the case of food, in the case of knowledge, Quran, it goes in your chest as knowledge and understanding, not just mere bits of data. Understanding, correct understanding, correct, uh, uh, getting the correct and the connected meaning. And then Mr. Rasa say they read the Quran, not the ayat of Quran, the Quran, the total Quran, and they still are unable to digest because they don't do the correct digesting tools. Even in fundamental things for the Khawarij. The, the area of Khawarij, which comes to Ali, their problem was the issue, issue of Hukum and ruling. Maybe we'll come to that point because some of the people currently are discussing that issue more extensively because they relate to rulers. And many of these Salafi and so on are agents, either paid agents and traitors like Madhari, Rabbi Madhari, I know him, I read a story about him, or many followers who think he's, he's really a, a pious man and guiding them to the right way. And in reality, he's, he's a paid man. He's an agent. I know him personally. I met him personally and discussed with him personally. So, what we're saying, yeah, about about uh, about with the Khawarij suffered because of the issue of of of, of ruling. It seems it's clear that they're reading the Quran without digesting it because the issue of ruling is clear in the Quran. When they say la hukma illa lillah, yes, there are various ayahs in the hukma there, but what's what's is which ruling is only for Allah, because the Quran says there are places we reveal the Torah with guidance and light and so on with which the prophets and the scribes and the Rabbani, the Rabbis, the Rabbani, etc., and the, and, the, and, the, and the scholars judge, rule also. So the prophets and the scribes, and they rule. So there's a ruling of, 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 of prophets and so on. <laughs> the message of is all the truth. If they come to you to rule between them, meaning the Jews and their dispute, then you have the liberty. Either you rule with them and say, no, no, you are an independent entity, manage your affairs. Or, or, you, or you choose to rule. If you choose to rule, the rule with Allah has revealed injustice. There's no liberty. You don't follow their desires. You rule with that are revealed to you, not what they want you to rule about. Yours, what have you revealed to you. So there is a ruling of the messenger. So in al-hukm of Allah must be certain ruling which is exclusive to Allah. Which one is that? That's a question. But that, if you have read all the Quran, you would digest, have digested it, you would understood that that this ruling is something else than what they objected to Ali ibn Abi Talib, agreeing to have uh, arbitration. It's not arbitration. Although the arbitration was a political mistake. And Ali said, this is a trick, but they didn't obey him. Okay, fine. But independent of that, has nothing to do with, with, with violating the fundamental result. It's ruling only for Allah. Usul Khan order us to rule if someone kills uh, a game. That we have to uh, is, is, uh, get two uh, two righteous men who uh, who make a ruling about what is the equivalent animal ca uh, animal of cattle or the equivalent expiation, which we discuss in Surah Al Maida, for example. For example. 
So a couple of observations there. So there what are is various it? rulings. Some of it excludes to Allah, some of it. What is excluded to Allah? That's what killed the Ilayr Shah Khawaj. They thought every ruling, including the arbitration, is, is only for Allah. No, it's not true. Allah ordered to others to rule this and this. And. So what is the ruling which is exclusive for Allah? That has to be settled. And this is in our book of Tawheed and Hakimiyya, which is almost, the translation is almost finished, I understand. Yeah, yeah, I think you are editing the final version. Yeah, but it needs to be is, 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 is sorted out after a long, deep discussion, invoking essentially the Quran and of reason. We don't even know, use a hadith for that. So if they have read the Quran and digested it, they would have reached that conclusion or a similar conclusion, maybe not as sophisticated. This one in our book is sophisticated because I'm building on knowledge and discussion over 1400 years, for God's sake. That will make you more sophisticated, more advanced. We develop things, we are the, let us say, the 14th, 15th generation, like a car of the 15th generation will be more sophisticated and polished than the early cars who are who go around stuttering. Clearly. But still, you could have got a, got a car at least, which walks, which, which, which drives. They don't get. They got a pile of junk and ended fighting Alam ibn Talib and causing a catastrophe for themselves, for the Ummah, and uh, Muawiyah was, was able to get away. And I suspect that even Muawiyah penetrated them and instigated them and played with them, Look, most likely. And there are very, very many hints indicating that he was playing the strings from behind the, the scene. But that's not our issue. So part of that also because they think they have with, with this blubbering and reading, just shallow reading, they got all the knowledge. So they don't bother about asking companions and asking other scholar people. Sheikh, there, there seems to be very close parallels in two respects with this individual and the Wahhabi movement. So just to jump ahead slightly. Exactly. So, exactly. so for example, so the one thing is, you know, you mentioned about the Dabbar al-Quran. You see very clearly right now in this current issue, what they do is they don't even... Uh, show all the hadith related to a given subject matter. So, for example, they build. We're obviously going to cover this in a few minutes, but they build a they build a narrative about de facto default position. Everyone agrees that you can't rebel against the ruler. You can't say anything against the ruler, and they they build this narrative while ignoring all the hadith which talk about when you can. The Quran before that. Because the Quran before that, because the Quran, where, where the ruler mentioned the Quran, only al Amr, in only two places. One place is the eye of famous ayah of obedience, Ati'u Allah wa Ati'u Rasul, so obey Allah and obey his messenger, with the repeating the word obey, because the obedience of the messenger is separate and additional to the obedience of Allah. Why? Because essentially it's the obedience of Allah because the messenger is infallible. We know the messenger is not Allah, he's a human being, he's not eternal, he's ephemeral. He will be restricted for eternity, hopefully all of us in paradise, but he is not by, by his own essential being and his essential being. So his obedience is essentially because he's reporting and following from Allah. So this is like obeying Allah. So the word obey, obedience is, is said clearly. So nobody is at liberty when he, see, when he receives a hadith, proved to be authentic, but possibly by Tawatr, to say, no, I'm not going to obey because it's not a Quran. No, we are not at liberty. You become kafir this way by this position. That's the reason the Quran, the extreme Quran, you say the Sunnah by itself is not is not binding a kafir. Yeah, that's no Sunnah itself, meaning if I hear it even from the messenger, no, I'm not going to obey. I obey only Allah. No, obey is exactly like obeying Allah. But the Quran says that, Then say, then he adds, and the one in charge of you, without the word obey again, meaning it is a minor level. It is just an appendix. And then after that, the addition where they stop most of the time, they don't feel. If you dispute about things, then refer it to Allah's messenger. Tanazatum with whom? Between yourself, but also with the rulers, the inshallah, because after mentioning the obey the uh, indirect obey for, for the one in charge, if you have a dispute, most likely from the, from the context, he means mainly the dispute between you and the rulers. But also between you and others, it's included. But the dispute here is focused mainly, not exclusively, with the rulers. So if you have a dispute with the rulers about a command, should be obeyed, not obeyed, why not obeyed? Refer back to Allah and His Messenger. If you believe in Allah, be a day of judgment. That's the only way to go. 
and this will have the final conclusion, the better result. Another place where the Arabs coming is that rebuking the Munafiqeen and those 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 uh, rumor mongers and so on by the فإذا جاءهم أمر من الأمن أو الخوف أذاعوا به. If they receive any news about which related to security and fear and war, war and peace, like for example, someone coming from in the time past. Now, nowadays, this impossible to happen, almost likely. But in time past, you may have, you may expecting a caravan to come from Sham, for example, for the goods you have, and you go outside, maybe longing to meet a caravan outside Medina. And you meet the caravan, someone come and tell you, actually, in the way there was, we saw in the horizon a gathering of one tribe or something with arms and so on, with gear, which shows it, it may be war. And they look like they're advancing. It looks like they're advancing to Medina. So there may be a danger. And you know about it. These uh, rumor mongers and these munafiqeen, they take that news, they sit in the masjid and say, there may be an army coming to Medina, like this and so on. Allah rebuking them for that. If they receive such a news, they broadcast it everywhere to show that I am knowledgeable and know, or with the intent to make the believers afraid and shaking and confused what's going on is there's an army coming. What they should have done, they should have referred to Allah to the messenger and the one in charge. Then the one in charge will know how to analyze that and take an appropriate action. Maybe the army is going elsewhere, has nothing to do with Medina. Maybe it need, we need to do a preparation. Maybe you need to dig up ditch. They will make the decision because they were in charge. They are responsible for war and peace. That's the second place mentioned. So this is an obligation in issues of war and peace security. You have to refer. Nowadays, there's no comparable case possible except maybe you see a bag in a train station. It looks suspicious. Then you go to the coffee shop. So there is a bag here. People run away. That's not the correct behavior. The correct behavior is to, to get the telephone, call the police. There is a bag. It's suspicious. Come check it. Because they have the tools and the vocabulary to do it. Don't go to the coffee shop and say, wait, people, there's a bag. Maybe the bomb run away. Causing confusion. Maybe causing a bigger problem than the bag, which turned out to be a, an innocent bag. Nothing is. Someone forgot his bag. Most of the time, it's like that. Extremely rare is explosive or danger. But that's not the correct way. The people may panic and some fall the tray, uh, break his neck and so on, causing a catastrophe. The correct way is calling the authority, the one who is responsible for, for, for security and so on. For example, give it, in modern time it could happen like that. But in this, not a complete army coming. <laughs> There's too many satellites and observation posts there to detect that. <laughs> but uh, something like that uh, should be of this category. In addition, so the, 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 the IS really case that if you have a dispute about things referred to Allah it, it says there may be a dispute, it could be a dispute, and it may be a legitimate dispute and had to be settled by referring to Allah the Messenger. Which is very structured, need a further discussion. It's in our book about obedience. What meaning refer to Allah the Messenger here? Meaning referring to an authority which can make a decision, meaning referring to something like a constitutional court. That's hinted there. And if you analyze it correctly, you will detect. But leave this very advanced part. But it hints it possible. So you could very dis well dispute to the ruler. You may have a good reason. You may not have a good reason. Some other authority, like a court, will arbitrate about that. So that's not Khuruj. Have nothing to do with Khuruj. Khuruj is only pulling the sword. Also, the Hadith of Khawarij shows clearly that Khuruj is only pulling the sword and starting killing the people. That's Khuruj. Disputing the ruler, even going into civil disobedience, refusing to go to work, is not Khuruj. It's just disobedience. Could be justified, could be not justified. It has to be arbitrated, according to Allah's Messiah said. But if the one in charge and ruler reached a level of, of making kufr and attacking the deen, the, the, the leaders of, of, of this belief of kufr, because they have no covenant. This in, in the ayah in Surah Tawbah applies first, prima facie, at Quraysh and the leader of the Quraysh and so on. Indeed, but it applies also to uh, domestic rulers. If they do the same, if they break the covenant, yes, because the ruler could not become a ruler unless he has given a covenant or an oath that he will attend to the public affair and protect uh, uh, people's uh, wealth, money, life, and so on, and do not do not attack the religion or undermine the religion or violate the well-established, agreed upon rules. Like, for example, allow usury. We'll come to usury in a minute. If he doesn't do that, 
and attack the religion by allowing usury or by permitting a giving by giving licenses in the Islamic domain, not outside Islam, in the Islamic domain to 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 brothers, then he is he's fulfilled the ayah. Then you have to fight him, al kufr, because they have no covenant anymore. Maybe if you fight them, they will stop that. When they start the fight, they show you are pulling the sword against them. So now it's becoming serious. But step back, I'm sorry, I'm correcting. Then we can negotiate and go from there and start correcting that. But without showing such type of people the sword, they will not stop. That they may stop then. The Quran. It's enough. You don't need to go to the hadith about obedience and the uh, kufr bawah and those who show in kufr and those who are practicing injustice and those who violate the sunnah fundamentally and the behavior of, of, of a proper imam, etc. There are many hadith about that. So, this ayah, so for example, this ayah you mentioned, this application to Quraysh, can they argue it's, no, it's specific? revealed in the context of the Quraysh and so on. That's fine. But the, but the reasoning is mentioned there. That's the reason for fighting them and declaring them to the leader of Kufr. That could be applied also to a Muslim ruler locally who broke his covenant to cut to, to Abu Quran Sunnah. That's his bay'ah, is to Abu Quran Sunnah and establish justice. If he breaks that and attack the religion by permitting usury, for example, and so on, there's a ta'an fi deen. When, when you are ruler, and you are obliged to prohibit usury and punish usury as by, by, by death penalty even, as it will establish because usury is act of war, according to the Quran also. And you allow usury, usury banking. Meaning similar people, your, your religion is, is BS. It's not worth. Kick it out. We have passed that stage. We are now in the postmodern time. That's what Ta'an Fiddi, the ayah fits in him exactly. Who said it's only the Quraysh can behave this way? Anyone fit because the, the ayah gives a description, the reason for that. If they break their covenants and their oaths. An attack or insult or injure your religion or declare to be false and it's not applicable. Then fight. The, these, these guys with these teeth, they are the leaders of kufr. I'm not even invoking the hadith of Ibn Abbas about the ayah. Ibn Abbas said this ayah, although it came in the context of Quraysh, the people which should be fought in this ayah, they have not come yet. They will come down the road. So <laughs> he's talking about the rulers. But I'm not even invoking that hadith. I'm just saying the ayah at face value. They are, they are the leaders of Kufr. They are able to Kufr because of these two things. That would make them the yeah, of Kufr and make them liable of being fought. Qatiluhum. Because they have no, no covenant, no ayman. They broke it already. Maybe they stop. Give you also the wisdom of fighting. If you pull the sword in front of these people, say, this is serious now. The whole people are rebelling with the sword. I have to step back and take a breath at least. Or I have to fight. It depends upon what. If he fights, you fight him until you finish him. If he stops and says, oh, that's the mistake I'm going to correct, sir. Show us. Close these, these brothers, close these in the Islamic domain, outside the Islamic domain, which is being jizzy and so on, that's permissible. We are not discussing that. It's like what the Islamic domain. It's ayah enough, plus the two ayahs about Uli Lam. You don't need to go to the hadith, the tons of the hadith by alone the hadith of Ka'b ibn Ujra is mutawatir. Which one's that, sorry? Hadith of Ka'b ibn Ujra. May Allah protect you addressing Ka'b ibn Ujra. May Allah protect you from the rule, the shape of the sufaha. Who do not who do not follow my sunnah who do this and this and but whoever obeys them in in their uh, approve their falsehood declare falsehood to be correct say yeah they are right they're saying they are correct things or help them in their in their in, in their uh, transgressions has nothing to do with me and I have nothing to them I, his relations broken with the messenger of Allah he departed the messenger of Allah and other hadith clearly the hadith of of uh, Tawbad about Quraysh and so on. He about Quraysh, the Imam should be Quraysh, etc., etc. And then he said, as long as they will be the legitimate Imam, as long as they, if they, if they, if they, when they, when they rule, they rule with justice. When they promise, they fulfill the promise. And when they ask for mercy, they show mercy. When they ask, 
Well, they are not obliged to do mercy to start with. They may be rough and harsh, strict. Well, okay, fine. But if they ask for mercy, in a reasonable, justified way, they should show mercy. And whoever not, doesn't do anything of that, of these Imams from Quraysh, or for sure or any other Imam, after Quraysh has expired from Imama, then Allah scares the cares of his angels and the cares of all people will be upon them. Thus, hadith is mutawatir in the books, has it. Even in Ahmad al Hanbal has it. After that, Ahmad al Hanbal specifically cut the tail of the hadith, which comes from three channels. One from Thawban, one from uh, uh, Nu'man ibn Bashir, one from uh, Umhan ibn Abi Talib, and one from, I will remember in a minute, Adil ibn Malik. The tail which they cut because they are afraid, most scholars were afraid, and some scholars were almost excluded because of it when narrated it, says, فَإِلَّمْ يَفْعَلُوا Okay, Allah cares on them, that's fine. Well, we know that about that. فَإِلَّمْ يَفْعَلُوا If they don't comply with these four, three conditions, then put your sword on your shoulders and exterminate them. Finish them. Don't let them. Otherwise, the whole life will, 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 will degenerate into, into oppression and you will become, you will become lowly farmers who are living from, from plowing the ground. Lowly farmers just plowing the ground, having no dignity, no, no, no character, no standing. At that time, farmers regarded as low, as like self, like in the time. That was a feudal time. It's not that far farming is a, is a bad profession, but farmers at that time were regarded as the low one, the one oppressed, the one submissive to the feudal lords. Otherwise, you will be a hapless farmer, the one who plowed the grounds, who are just surviving and eating from that what they plow. That's it. And the, the, the lords and the kings and so on are oppressing them and riding them like donkeys. Then you will be like that. This narrative that the, the Madkhalis have, trying to make it almost like an ijma, and they try to, you know, say it's some kind of a consensus, some kind of overwhelming. Is it, does it have any basis? How did it. There is uh, one or two, not probably narrated the hadith, and neglecting this hadith, because even the hadith, the other narrated about obedience, and st and, unless you see a kufr buah, does not support them. And that's the reason they say, well, there's no kufr buah. We don't see any kufr buah. Usury is just a sin. It's not kufr buah. No, my dear friend. The hadith of kufr buah comes in two forms from Abad ibn Samit. One with the word kufr buah, and one with the following characteristic uh, uh, clarification what kufr buah from the rural side will be. Say, illa an ya'murka bi ma'asiyatin bawahan. Unless you, he command you with an obedience, disobedience to Allah or haram publicly. That's the kufr buah for the ruler. It's not kufr buah that you stand there, I don't believe in a God, or uh, I have become a Buddhist now. That's not the kufr buah. This is private, his private affair. Oh, he, he loses that authority. Now, we all know that a kafir comes through the Muslim. That's fine. But that's not what the hadith means. Because the other form, the from Ubadah, also what's sahih. Well, it's not the Bukhari, but the same thing. It's saying, إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْمُرَكَ بِمَعْصِيَةٍ بَوَاحًا Unless he commands you with a, with a, with a ma'asiyah, with disobedience to Allah, with a sin, publicly. Now, Allowing your uh, uh, usury banking in the Islamic domain. By the way, what is not allowed even in even the Confederation domain, even in Dhimma domain, is not allowed because of the Najran Treaty. Even that not allowed there. He allows that. All, although his obligations were to prevent usury and even kill usury after at least one istitaba. So publicly ordering you not to touch these usuries. And not to sue them in court. Or to you ma'asiya bawah. It's kufr bawah. But these people are jokers. These people are just the, the last of, of, of And that's the reason they 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 they, they play games with, with the Quran and Sunnah. And they hide most of it. Exactly like the when Israel, the Quran condemns. When asked the, the Jews, who revealed when they denied, say, when, when an argument with one of the Sahaba, I think it's Abu Bakr, and then one of them said, Say, you see that what has come to Muhammad is similar to what has come to Musa. We said, who told you that Musa received the revelation? All of these are old myths. <laughs> so that hapless Jew, Jewish scholar, escaped to denying the revelation. And Allah asked him, the Quran, then who revealed the Torah to Musa? Say, no, no revelation has come to anybody. Say, then ask him, who brought down the revelation to Musa? Which you brought down the generation? You show some part of it and the rest you are hiding from the public. Who did that? 
who revealed it? It's Allah who revealed it. All your history is based on that, that revelation came to Musa and he got you out of Egypt with all these miracles. All your history is defined this way. And now we're denying everything because you don't want to accept Muhammad. You're not going to get away. Exactly happened to us with, with some scholars starting with the ancient before even Madhali and Farid bin Abdul Wahab. Unfortunately, some hadith scholars they try to hide that cover up. Unfortunately, very unfortunate, but this has happened. With this, we will expose that in various various way. I hate that, but it has to be. Sometimes you need to go to history and clean the mess which is accumulated. Because I mean, this whole mentality of building almost like this absolute consensus it's not based on anything. I mean, nothing. how do they get really nothing? Give you an example. The Imam of Ahl Sunnah, Ahmad bin Hanbal, in his deathbed, ordered his son Abdullah to strike a hadith, saying this hadith is bad. The Mu'tad, so, so his reasoning, the Mu'tad used it as a reasoning for not attending Jum'ah. What's the hadith we struck? The hadith which he struck, and this in the, in the initial, the one, the narrator of the Musnad from the son Abdullah said there was a line on the top. At that time, they, they cross out, not by crossing through, they cross above. That was their convention of crossing out. It was crossed out, he said, but it's narrated. Crossed out, but narrated. Still, the wording is there. The hadith is the famous hadith of Huraira, say, my ummah will be destroyed by this, some 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 sub-tribes of Quraysh, or, or, or uh, stupid uh, young people of Quraysh. And uh, the people were shocked. So what we should do with them? What can we do with them? The Messiah said, if the people would have will, 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 will avoid interacting with them, avoid obeying them, do civil disobedience essentially, do general strike essentially, but use the Atazalum, if the will, will, will separate from them, Atazalum, even depart from the country, the country for them, then they will collapse already, they will not be able to do anything if the people depart. This is the right medicine for, for oppressive and satanic governments. Just general strike, stay home, the regime will collapse, no regime can survive. But if all people comply, unfortunately, people do not comply. So the medicine is not effective. He gives you a medicine, you should, you should be taking the right dose, you don't take it. And the argument of Ahmed bin Hanbal is, is this. I am very doubtful that is really that's his real motivation. Because the Mu'tazah used that as a reason not to attend Jum'ah because with these bad Imams. I don't think so. I think the reason is that the Hadith talks about some tribes of Quraysh, which means Bani Umayyah and his beloved Muawiyah, possibly. But this is judging intentions of people who should abstain from that without color. But we, in the case of Ahmed Hanbal, because so many hadith he cut and mutilated just to exonerate Muawiyah. So we have, we have the right to doubt really his intention. But even the argument he used is a faulty and so is stupidity in the understanding. Even if the Mu'tazila used that to avoid Jum'ah. Say the Mu'tazila is wrong. That's it. Tell them you misunderstood the hadith. What's the meaning of hadith? If they use it, what's the problem? And they call it hadith radi, a bad hadith, an evil hadith. And it's not one of the best you can find in the whole world. What's in Bukhari and Muslim and most books of hadith until now. It's famous. Who, who's, who called it hadith radi? Ahmed bin Hanbal? Ahmed bin Hanbal himself. Wow. And he calls plenty of hadith which criticize Muawiyah and so on, a hadith radi, plenty. If he gets to hear them, normally he doesn't hear them. And when any of his mashaykh narrate these things, he put cotton in his ears or he goes far away so he cannot hear. And this narrated by several of his students. They think it's a virtue, by the way. You get so blinded and admiring your sheikh that his blatant faults, faults become a virtue in your eye. That's how, how, how uh, uh, the devil can blind you. And how you could blind yourself by not choosing the right imam your right imam my right imam should be the quran that should be your imam not ahmed bin hanbal not Muhammad al masa not anybody in the world that should be your imam and that's what the professor told hudayfa when we're asking about the viewers hudayfa the specialist hudayfa ibn al-yaman is the specialist of fitan yeah we know that he's the specialist of fitan so we ask about he said he tells himself people ask about us about goodness how to go good and they're asking about evil because I want to avoid it. I know evil will come, fitan will come. There's no way that we will stay in the high level where they are with the Prophet. That's, that's not the nature of the universe. This is a testing universe. Remember again, this is not a paradise. That's where you are tested. They said with, with the time of the Prophet, but the testing the time of the Prophet may be 
relatively easy and, and simple because you have the unfallible one protecting you there and doing the job for you. But if he is gone, there's nobody there. So we're asking, well, which kind of fit on you? And uh, he, he asked after, after this shower will be here. After, and after every question he asked, the Messenger said, Hudayfa, ta'allam kitab Allah u'man babihi khayr lak. Don't ask about these fit and details. It will not benefit you. What benefit you? Learn the book of Allah and apply it is better for you. Three times. Then he said there will be a fitna like that, which the first fitna was the time of Bakr the Ridda. Then he asked, and after that is a fitna, say, yeah, the, the hearts will not be as pure as they were before. But before that, he warned him three times to learn the book of Allah. And then he asked, then he said something after that, say, yes, Hudayfa, don't waste your time. There will be fitna after fitna, after the day of Learn the book of Allah and apply it is better for you. And then he tells the next one. Because Hudayfa is insisting to get more knowledge about the coming fitness. That's the reason he's a fitness specialist. But every time he reminds him three times, don't waste your time with this. This will not benefit you. Benefit you, learn the book of Allah and apply it. Ta'allam kitab Allah wa'amal bima fi. Khairul lak is better for you than these questions about fitna. So, which will come because the system of the verse is going to work like that, going to grind everyone. Nobody will escape. Nobody will escape. That's it until the dunya ends. Then in Yom Al-Qiyamah there will be the reward and the sorting out. Not in dunya. So you have to take the, the Imam, the Quran to be your, your Imam. The whole Quran. Learn it and apply it. It will be better for you. Then you will see the way. You don't need Ahmed Muhammad or Rash, Rash or Muhammad al Masari to teach. You don't need it. You don't need any of that. You don't need any of that. The Book of Allah is enough. Even in the miserable English translations, which we're reading in the Seal Quran, even in that, there's enough guidance there to protect you all from the utmost extreme uh, failure, at least. Yeah, maybe fine issues of inheritance and things like that need the most of his guest scholarship and the hadith, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about things, major things. The things problems that you have today. Things which uh, results in cutting your neck and destroying your life. That's what talking about. The, the problem you have today is, is because of petrodollars and building this kind of narrative. Exactly. They, now, they focus concerning on... the petrodollar, let me just mention that I, I mentioned something about Rabia Madhali and I have to, uh, to to give what has happened. We had, I participated in the pilgrimage, I think in the year 91 or something, 1991 or 90 or something like that. And that year something characteristic happened is that it was full. As usual, in the recent 20, 30 years, the place is full. And then they have arranged things like that, and the police was blocking the way inside Arafat. Okay? Some Turks, you know, the Turks are hot-blooded and stuff, tough heads. They came, and it was blocked. And they told the police, we want to go in Arafat. And they're stubborn. They don't know that when Arafat is full, then you can extend outside. Because you have to have a fatwa for that. Okay, fine. And they say, it's, Arafat is full. They say, no, no, you are lying. The Turks tell them, look here, there's a gap there, we can go there. Ultimately, long talk, short sense, they came down, beat up the police, <laughs> removed the blocks and entered. <laughs> Nothing can be done about that. <laughs> they had what else about they get a military to do something, so the police got beaten up nicely that time. The only police. After Hajj, we hear that stories and uh, what the repercussions and the discussion about that. We were in a gathering after Hajj. We were in normal clothing and everything. And the people said, Ibn Aytaymin is in this house of so let us go and see what he's saying. And he was talking about various things, trivial things. I, I call them trivial. Stoning and so on before. And you know the never-ending treasure. I stoned before this, I did. And they settled by the Prophet long ago. He said, someone said, a stone before slow thing, say, do no problem, do no problem. Any order is okay. So I want to say, this is, this is, this talk is, is, is vain, it's trivial. I said, Sheikh, addressing me, I mean, what's about what has happened now? First of all, blocking like that is not appropriate. There's no need to block. If Arafat become full, the buses and the cars will be will be backing up, backing up until the border of Arafat. And then you come and see everything back up. <laughs> Nothing can be done. You have to stand there. But most people are ignorant that in that case, Arafat actually is extended. Overflow. Up to accommodating any number. But the people need a structured fatwa. People like you. 
a mashaykh like you should issue a fatwa with authority to solve this problem so we don't get police beating or the Turkish beating and the, both of, both have lost their hajj, the vote of their hajj by this violence. Hajj is a place who is a time of peace, not violence. And also, maybe you should advise the authority that they should discipline the police. Otherwise, that's not proper to, to treat the hajj like that. When you say the authority, a man, I don't know him at the time, looks like a rat without really any abuse. Like a rat, small. The first impression in my mind, that's the rat. Not a human being. That I said, Sheikh, uh, uh, someone was asking about that he stoned before and by God, went back to stoning before, after and some trivial questions. And the Sheikh's attention was diverted. I knew this is deliberately by the dismissal with this rat. So after we left, I asked someone, who is this rat who came and spoiled a, a, a meaty discussion? It's a little bit more meaty, I'm not discussing high politics, discussing how to extend Arafat, how to manage the huge numbers of Hujjaj, which is more worthy than uh, stoning before or after and so on, before sunset, after sunset and so on. It's valid, invalid, should be repeated. She didn't know this, this is what you call rat. Say, no, this is, this is Dr. Rabi Ahmad Khali. <laughs> I knew him from writing before when I wrote uh, uh, an, uh, a risala, an epistle about the coming of the forces and uh, argue that it's illegitimate to call them for the so-called liberation of Kuwait and so on. I had, I had a risala, it went around. At the time, the regime was, uh, I think that's the reason I think it was 91 or 92 that that happened. The regime was so weak and, and uh, they disgraced that they didn't dare detain anybody. So I got away with this. But he responded in his, in, he made the writing say, defending against the attack of Mulhideen, of the atheist, meaning Saddam and the Iraq, the atheist, in his theory, by invoking the help of Mushrikeen. That's his book. And he says, and Mas'ali says, so we don't agree with him. It is like this, it's like this, that. So he's mentioned my epistle there. And so was, there was an interaction intellectually before that. And this was interaction face to face. That's Rabbi Ahmed Khali. And after that, nothing good we hear from him. As, as a matter of fact, there is very good evidence. I don't say it's an absolute evidence and where I can't make an oath on it, but it's very strong from various sources that they saw his name in the so-called Musayyar, the list of salaries issued monthly and he was listed i think with the rank of of uh, major the so one with this with that crown uh, this one star two star three star on the crown i think it's major i think major captain something like that in 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 the secret police so a man allows him to work as a spy in a religion where spying is absolutely prohibited i leave your judgment about him and this is called scholar sheikh rabia and so on but this, the other one is based on a witness of someone who saw the Musayyar. And I think the witness is trustworthy as well, but I couldn't make an oath on that. But the other things I have seen by my own eye and read by my own. The man is, 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 uh, is, is paid by money, is a munafiq, is a munafiq. I cannot, I, I cannot say anything at least on that. I mean, this despicable type of individuals. With, with the discussion with Ibn Uthameen and diverting the issue, it's clearly the, the hallmark of, of Munafiqeen. They attend to scholars, simple minded or, 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 or coward scholar. Ibn Uthameen is a coward. He admitted himself publicly to, to many people that he's a coward and he doesn't dare say something. Or Ibn Baz and so he's not a coward but he's weak. He just remains silent or cut the discussion if he cannot answer. But what I mean is, 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 is uh, really a coward by his own admission. They attend to these scholars and either put stupid questions so they get all the, the session wasted for nonsensical questions or uh, uh, or uh, uh, or they, uh, they if there's any meaty discussion happens that they cross me with, 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 with a nasty question to, to divert the attention. I understand the liberty. This is intelligence service work. That's not scholarly work. That's not people who think that they will meet him one day Allah SWT and Yom Al-Qiyam will be questioned. It doesn't look like that. Sheikh, what they, what they do is they, they, it's red herrings. Basically, red herring is something that's a distraction. So another yeah. one, for example, this fixation on bidda, this fixation on, so for example, bidda is a, uh, an interesting one. So by them making bidda or mubtade or, for example, istighath is another big one in terms of uh, it's, 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 based, it's based on their own bid'ah of definition of of uh, of, uh, of uh, ibadah or definition of ilah. This is bid'ah. It's not a definition of the Quran. So they invented the definition. 
that's okay. It's that maybe it's scholarly work, but the moment you make a deen, because you base the deen in it, you base, 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 base takfir, tabdi on it, then it becomes itself a bid'ah. Honestly, so it's creating I'm... definition as, as you can, as a mathematician, you can create mathematical definition. As even a scholar of fiqh, you can define something. Uh, uh, a fiqh definition, you give the correct definition and so on. But if we make that definition, declare is the deen as the only way to go. That's number one. Or uh, you you uh, you based on it something with Dean, then this definition then become a bid'ah. If it, if if it's not a correct definition according to the Quran, it is then created, and then declared to be a Dean. And worse, if it is contradicts the Quran, like the that the Ilah is the uh, God is the the, the worship the, uh, the deity is the things which is worshipped. This contradicts La Ilaha Allah, contradicts the Ayah in Surah Al-Mu'minun blatantly. It's not so that's a clear heresy the details, there. The details of the discussion in all fine things are in the book Tawheed in chapter 7, 8, 9 and so on. In so that's, would you call, that's a clear heresy. Obviously a person can be excused by ignorance of what it may be. So all of that this, is even, a... even Shirk al qubur declaring that uh, touching the grave and visiting the people in the grave and asking them for this, asking for them and so on, declaring that to be Shirk and it's worshipping, calling it worshipping the grave, that, that naming itself is a bid'ah. Because if if that has any standing, we would have a hadith or a Quran mentioning worshiping a grave anywhere. There is none whatsoever. The only thing they are related on is that a faulty narration in Bukhari, allegedly Ibn Abbas, which is not Ibn Abbas. We have proven that in the Book of Tawil also. But even if it is Ibn Abbas, allegedly that a lat, which is mentioned in Surah Al-Najm, is a man who used to be doing lat, kneeing the dough and making like 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 a sweet or some dish and giving it to the hujjaj for free. And then the story goes that, that after he died, they honored his grave. But according to the Quran, go to Surah Al-Najm to say that. Even if Ibn Abbas said that, relying on some, some mythical stories of the Arab, is irrelevant. The Quran says clearly, Surah Al-Najm from the beginning to the end, discuss various issues and then comes to Allah and Uzza. Allah and Uzza Manat are female deities. And the Quran is clearly from the beginning to end, nothing is female in that surah except Allah and Uzzam and Athar, all these females and the female deities. And the Quran says clearly, and they are supposed to be the, the, the consort or the, 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 the offsprings, the, 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 the daughters of Allah. Do you ascribe daughters to Allah, female, while you don't like female girls? How come? Why is Allah supposed to have daughters and you are, do not like daughters? And the Quran rebuked that in other places, but in this surah, Allah is clearly something female, a female deity. So they took that faulty narration, which is not a hadith from Prophet from Ibn Abbas, who could be wrong, could believe the story, a mythical stories of the Arab. If it's true from him, it's not from him, it's definitely fabricated against him. But assume it's from him. He took that and struck it and gave the Quran a slime on the face. Moreover, moreover, Sheikh, taking even that's, you know, all, even that's the all thing ever in that all narrative of Quran and Sunnah and narrative about the Arabs' uh, behavior and so on, which talks about graves and honoring a grave. All the narratives about honoring graves in uh, about in the Arab Jahiliya is only that the grave of tribal chieftain is regarded as a refuge. If you go there, then the sons of the tribal chieftain will protect you from any prosecutor. So it's like like a like have a sanctuary has nothing to do with anything worse with that. And even some people thought if we get buried the Prophet that was discussed by the Sahaba, if we buried him outside in, in Baqiyah, outside our control, someone who have committed a crime may come and hold the grave, say, you cannot touch me, I'm in the sanctuary. So we bury him rather in the masjid, which is continuously under our supervision. That's one of the discussion made in the death of the Prophet after his death. And what the reason they made it in the masjid? or in the house of Aisha, which is next to the masjid, so we're under control, nobody will, will abuse it, because the house of Aisha, who can enter, is haram to enter, she's under hijab, so that, that we excluded, so that's the habit of the Arab about graves, and the famous graves, would you like that, like a grave of Tamim, and maybe Qusay, two or three graves were known to be sanctuary for someone running away, taking, taking protection, has nothing to worship anything, Someone taking just a sanctuary as protection, like nowadays, some people run in certain countries which have respect for the churches, Oh, uh, uh, they are in the church, and at the moment in the church, nobody will persecute them inside. They wait for them outside to come. Some countries still have this tradition, and some Muslim countries have that for the masjid. Unfortunately, it's not very common uh, for the Muslims, for the uh, holy sanctuary in Mecca, it should be like that, by, by appropriate injunction.
I think so. This is true. That's all what's this there. Is... That's all what's there about grapes. So from this, from nothing, ex nihilio, they created deity and worshiping graves and declaring 85% of Pakistani are brainy and brainy worship graves and they are Mushrik Kafir. That's what Abdul Wahab used, the for example, to attack the Ottomans and all this kind of stuff. Because, also, this, partly because of that, yeah. Also, and the other thing is about um, using this issue of bidah, labeling someone Mubtadi, it's also being used right this moment in time to not discuss with them. So, for example, uh, this is an open forum and it's actually open to anyone. We've this. Anything that comes out of this, we are willing to have open discussions on Zoom with anyone, everyone, bring it on. They, so, want, they want to allow you in their forums. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is this mentality. What establishes following Bid'a again is that mm -hmm. listening to the Muftadi and the Deviant may, may spoil your heart and get you to become Muftadi like him. So the best thing is to do like the people of Nuh when they treated Nuh. Put, put plugs in their ear and cover their clothes like this. That's it. That's in Arabic. I, I coined the word called Kamnahiya, Kaum Nuh. I dropped the O, the O, the two O's, Kamnah. Kamnah meaning plug your ears and the, which is the opposite of the Quran in, made an injunction to everyone. What the Quran made an injunction said, praising the people of Albab, of understanding and insight, they listen to everything, any call, any statement, and they follow the best out of it. They recognize what is true and is good and check the other one. The only thing prohibited. Is only one place and reminded in Medina, which was enacted in Mecca. If you see they are sitting and rejecting and mocking, rejecting, is I right to say the similar to Ayatla, you for me how you start the Obia. Falata Kodumahum Hatta Hudu for Hadith. I don't sit with them until they start another talk. So if when they start another talk, you can go back sit with them. But not if the eyes of Allah and His revelation are being mocked. And denied denial with mockery, not denial. Say we don't believe the Quran is from Allah. That's not that's not mockery. That's denial, yes, but it's not mockery. Okay, then we discuss with, argue with them, but not if it's mockery. Then it, 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 it has become then a, a, a comedy session for entertainment. That cannot be. Quran and Sunnah and Allah and His Messenger are off limit for entertainment. Absolutely. What did they, what did they come up with this? Don't sit with the Muqtadi and all this. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a thing on scholar. It's BS. It's BS. That's what in the Quran. Quran says, listen to every talk. If you are a man of reason, or you say, I am not having enough loop, I will not listen. I am not able to select. But saying it's prohibited, you don't do, don't sit with that. And they, even their scholars said, we are not going. For example, Al Khalili, the Mufti of Oman, challenged him and Baz for a debate in the Haram. He said, no, I'm not going to give him a platform to spread his bid'ah to the whole of the world. Relying on what some scholar in time past, Ahmed bin Hamad, said, don't sit with that, don't discuss with them. A reality, he knows deep inside that he will not be able to win any debate with Khalili. So they're running away, running away from the debate. They invented that. This is an invention invented. I think that when started inventing this way, way of, of thinking and this advice is the second, second generation, like people like Ayub Sikhtiani and so on. Would not that only that, not only that, that, even pursuing anyone who having a hadith they don't like, they call a hadith al the bad hadith. To the tune that one of the st uh, students of Ayub Sahriani heard, heard that Abu Uwana, a famous narrator of Bukhari level and so on, Bukhari is full of narration of Abu Uwana, Muslim and so on. Abu Uwana was in Kuva and wrote down a number of hadith from A'mash which uh, criticized mu Muslim Muawiyah. So he went to Abu Uwana and told him, Listen, I hear that you collected a hadith from, uh, from A'mash. Can I take a look to them? So he said, Yes. And he took the hadith and threw them in the, in the oven, burning them. Would you like to take someone's work and burn it in the oven? And to add insult to injury, someone asked Ahmed bin Hanbal or Ishaq bin Rahwi, I'm not sure which one of them, or both of them. What they did Salim ibn Abi Mutiyah, who did that? What Salim ibn Abi did is, is right or wrong? He says, he did right. You should do the same. I say, but, but uh, this guy may, may, may ask for compensation for his work and his book and his, uh, say, uh, uh, and how can you take from him? Is that not a theft? Say, no, it's not a theft. You are doing well. So they encourage the people to take other people who are writing and books and burn them. Islamic history and this scholarship was called Imams and first class narrator like like uh, 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 Ayyub Sikhtiani, Ayyub ibn Abi Tamim, Ibn Abi Tamim, Kisan Sikhtiani and so on. 
وش اسمه اسفاد ثقة ثابتة حجة trustworthy firm and authority that's that's his behavior in narration is no doubt about that he is but anything else any reasonable point of view in a rational discourse is nil so you could be very well first class in in, in narration and exactness and nil in any understanding I give you a simple example. Take a recording device, MP3 recorder, and record our discussion. It will record it more meticulously than Bukhari or anybody in the world. But ask a device to give you an advice about a medical issue, it can't. It has no mind. You're being an excellent recorder, does not mean that you have any mind. But they have confused, I think, those hadith recorder and imams of hadith are also imam of fiqh and understanding of them. No, they are not. Some of them are blatantly deficient to the level of also mental retardment. Also, in, in terms of the Salaf, I mean, Imam Abu Hanifa is more of a Salaf than Ahmed bin Hamul, yeah. if you look technically. Well, that's the reason all of them, all these of this category, they attack Abu Hanifa, declare him to be in narration weak, and in matter of piety and deen, to be either deviant or a kafir. Many of them have declared the kafir of Abu Hanifa. No, the matter is much more serious, I think. Much more serious. Which ones? Uh, which, look, which, 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 uh, uh, look at the level of understanding of someone like Ahmed bin Hanbal. One of the students asked him, what's about the hadith? Man kuntu mawla fa'imad. Whom I am an ally or, 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 or a guardian or a supporter. Ali is also a supporter. He said, don't ask about that and don't mention it again. With the, instead of explaining him what is the meaning, and it's not what the meaning the Shia thinks, which is well structured. All what you need is go to the Quran and scan what the meaning of that mawla. There may be seven, eight, ten meanings. And you can exclude one by one with meticulous exacting word, which I'm doing now at the moment. The only one remaining is that anyone worthy of support and can is, is uh, the messenger of Allah. Uh, is uh, if, the, if anyone is supportive and, and willing to sacrifice and support the messenger of Allah, which every believer should be, then he should do the same for Ali. We should do it for every believer. That's Allah. We are allies with every believer. The alliance of Ali is of higher rank, the same like the alliance of the Prophet. The same with the other hadith said that whoever insults Ali is like insulting the Prophet. If I insult you, this is a sin. No doubt about that. Maybe a lie, maybe a fabricated story about you. I saw this guy with a woman who she's not his wife. Hmm. That's that's Bukhtan. Doesn't it take you a photo of them? But if you do something through the Prophet or Ali, then you get then you become a kafir. Because Ali have the same protection from, from insult, like the Prophet, because of the hadith of Um Salama and this hadith also. For example, he could have answered that if he had any brain. But he's unable. And so he said, I don't understand the meaning. Let's go and ask some faqih or fuqah. There are fuqah in Baghdad at that time. No, no, no. Don't don't uh, talk about that. Don't ask about that. Covering up. I, I, I know it is very harsh for many people to be shocked to hear that today about the scholars and Imam al-Sunnah al-Jama'ah, Ahmed bin Hanbal and Ayyub al-Sakhdiyani and things like that. Be shocked. Because you have to get out of this mindset. The Ummah is now after the decline and the complete defeat and finishing of the Khilafah on the ground now. Now we have to build clean. Look at the foundation. The foundation which we have received over the generation is definitely rotten. Otherwise the building would not have collapsed. So we have to clean that rot, put solid iron hard granite hard foundation and build on it and this cannot go on without digging a little bit and getting the filth out even if it's painful even if it's painful there's no free lunch we have to do it that will be being circular anyway let me tell me just summary about the current madkhali and salafi leave in alhamdulillah Wahab. Wahab may be obsessed and maybe have some some positive aspects for you it was extremely anti uh change of sharia and things like that no doubt about that let's assume that but these guys they are only in the protection of their own that's their job they have no other job they will be extremely harsh with you with any small violation or they I think a violation and they will be extremely lenient liberal with the with the rulers and because they cannot run away from the issue of kufr buah because the agreement of all Muslims, otherwise they will become kafir blatantly, they try to get their role of says it, but if it does everything, and even the, the publicly, publicly they say, for example, this Rais recently said, even if you see him in television publicly doing sodomy and fornication, you still have to obey him. 
all the kufr. Even when I mean all the record, not saying uh, if you see kufr and so on, you, you cannot rebel, so but he said in a question uh, concerning the Algerian regime, by the way, not the Saudi regime. He said, well, let's assume an assumption which is far away, but let's assume the far away assumption. Let's assume he's kafir about the ruler. Usual. The discussion was about the, uh, the question was about the Algerian rulers after the coup d'etat in the 90s. But it applies to Saudi Arabia, everyone else. Then, why charge the hearts against him? Meaning, you should not tell the people he's doing kufr, you should hate him, you should reject him, etc. Not even that. He asked, why? Why? Essentially saying, just tolerate kufr and close your eyes. Leave Don't get involved with that. Even that, that's been a shame. And it's available, when the record is available, and the video is... Just, uh, just before I did, we, we did this, a brother made a very good point. He sent me a message, said, we should start calling them secular Salafis. Sec secularist? Secular Salaf Salafis. Yeah, essentially. Because, essentially. Because, uh, because basically, there is nothing you can do. Or... or they can uh, legislate... Or, or uh, 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 they, are, they are as deviant from, from Islam with basic foundation, as Paul is deviant from true Christianity. Paul, Paul, Paul was also a Salafi in that sense, and Madhkhal in that sense, because he told the people, uh, arguing with Qadr now, uh, taking the escape route of Qadr, arguing with that, that you, you should obey the emperor, who was pagan at the time. He doesn't want to have a conversation with the government. He would say, because he could not become an emperor without Allah's permission. This is obviously appealing to Qadr, not to the Sharia. And he is needed to establish the safety of the roads. So exactly what I want to say. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an security, and that's all what, what counts. And the kingdom of Christ is otherworldly in the next life, not here. There's no kingdom of Christ here. Because Christ has, uh, has announced the kingdom. The whole book is about, uh, the whole uh, gospel is essentially about announcing the kingdom. The kingdom is near and so on. And he interprets the kingdom is otherworldly. Reality, the kingdom, let me give you an interpretation, and people may think about it uh, as a side issue, as an important issue. The kingdom he's announced is essentially announcing Muhammad where the Sharia will be established and we will have we'll have systems which apply what Allah has revealed essentially. So the kingdom of God will be on earth. The kingdom of the otherworldly is something else, it's not this world. But in the of that, that's that's Paul. So they are Pauline Muslims. Like, like, like De deviant and uh, and uh, Christianity, which the only one survived since the third century or fourth century, is or even second century, is is uh, is utter deviation. And there is connected with attributing divinity to Christ and things like that, which attracts the people more attention. But the reality, the catastrophe happens with this statement that the kingdom of Christ is otherworldly, that the emperor rules by, by Allah's permission, even if it's only the creative permission, and nobody should rebel, should submit, should obey and listen. That's exactly Pauline Christianity. And the divinity even of Christ example, is, just, is just like an icing on the cake, actually. Even that example you gave him, Abdul Wahab, when he uh, had that interaction with Ibn Sa uh, with Saud, and, he, and just the fact that he was prepared to relegate issues of a person legislating or oppressing or taking tax and just considering it not a big deal is another early indicator of this kind of hierarchy yeah, that they, they said there the motivation is this. he said as long as you support me for the, for for tawhid he was so obsessed that he's blinded of that that's not the same like madhali madhali is systematically and theoretically and founding it as a structured argument in books and and publications they they are acting like the Yehud. They are clearly yeah, acting yeah, like but the Yehud. When, when you see the evidence, is so the obsession clear. is completely blind. Say, oh, this is a sin, and so on. Okay, and uh, another another narration claimed that he said maybe there will be booty in the future. You don't need the taxes. I think it's fabricated this addition, but maybe that's what he came in his mind, and the other writer guessed what is in his mind. Whatever justification is just because of the blinding of obsession. That's different than a structured theory represented. Tell you that, for example, one recent guy of them, we know Hakimiya. Hakimiya is the Rosh of Allah, that Allah is the ultimate sovereign and the ultimate legislator. Who, 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 who define what's good and evil, what's haram and halal. That's what the ruling is excluded to Allah, the fundamental initial definition. The formulation maybe is given to the prophets. The application in court, judicial judgment, is left to the judges. 
application in executive branch is left to the executive branch. That's also type of ruling and judgment and so on. That's just to clarify what we said about the Khawarija and the stupidity about uh, there's the uh, uh, only ruler is Allah, only ruler in that sense. Okay, this hak this hakimia meaning Allah is his ultimate sovereign, which is a fundamental of Islam. So is essentially the meaning of La ilaha illallah. And Muhammad Rasulullah, because the Muhammad could not have been a messenger unless that ilah, that deity, is interested to give you commands. Otherwise, why, why is it a messenger? To give you a message from him. Do, don't do. Know me, don't know me. Avoid this, do this. That's what, what the messenger have to bring. Or just even present him. You must know that I have these attributes. Even if he doesn't give any injunction, just telling you about the divine, meaning the divine want you to believe in that and appreciate it, at least. That's the divine, so ultimate divine sovereignty, which is, means Rububiya, which means Hakimiya. And exclusively for Allah. That's the core of Tawheed, the peak of Tawheed, is Hakimiya. You find the book written by one of these Madkhali, Jami Madkhali, that time part they were what they called Jami, because the leader was Muhammad Aman Jami, an Abyssinian ex communist who became Muslims, Allah, if he became or not. And, uh, and uh, then became then crawling on the butt in front of the Saudi government. And later on, Rabi Madkhali inherited this, took this evil banner. Anyway, do you know what the title of the book says? A Tawheed Qabl al Hakimiyah. Tawheed first than Hakimiyah. So Hakimiyah is not Tawheed for him, it's something extra. <laughs> like, like if you say the peak of the mountain, no, the, the, the base of the mountain first, but ignore the peak. The peak does not need to be considered. As if the peak is not resting on the base. Hakimiya is the peak of the Tawheed. And most shirk is coming from Hakimiya, not from... from uh, and we have a unique case of shirk which is purely Hakimiya. has nothing to do with other deity in the classical sense. That's the shirk of people of Lut. Because they dare legislate for themselves that, uh, that, uh, that uh, cohabiting with, with male is permissible. That's it. If you check the Old Testament, check it. Did they have any idols? No. Quran does not mention any idol. Read the story of two Lut from the beginning to the end of the Quran. I was surprised when I noticed this thing a few years ago. So I said, maybe I'm mistaken. So let me check a hadith. Nothing about the hadith in this story. Let me check the Old Testament. It may be part of it to be fabricated, but at least the core of the story may be correct. And the whole story of, of uh, Lut and the people of Lut. No idols, nothing, absolutely nothing. Only legislating that what they desire. Undermining Hakimiya. And they're Mushrikeen, we know they're Kafir. And they have punished one of the most severe punishment in history by volcanic eruption, stone from heaven. So we have this kind. All other prophecies like that, mostly it's Hakimiya, which people don't recognize. Even Pharaoh, when he ultimately, after a long discussion, tells Musa, if you adopt another deity beside me, I will put you in prison. I am the deity. I am the ruler. I'm the king of Egypt. I'm the son. That is the son of the God, of the, of the uh, 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 son God. That's fine. That's something metaphysical. But the reality of the discussion is I am the king here and I am the deity here. I am the ruler here. That's being founded on being the son of the son God. That's just metaphysical. But the reality, I am the ruler. My ruling is final, not your God. And most other Mushrikeen, if you analyze it carefully, is that. It's going to Hakimiya. Not to have another deities and so on. They have, they have. I'm not saying they don't have. But the people of Lot, they don't have at all. And he's mentioned the same stream like other prophets. The same general statement. And so just as a recap, find this guy, I don't remember his name. I think it's, it's maybe someone called uh, Trahib or something. Maybe or another guy from the from the, the this cohort. They, he said, Tawheed awal and thumma al-Hakimiya. First Tawheed must be established, then we discuss Hakimiya. Why? First of all, to enforce the opposition of Muhammad al-Wahhab. Possibly he has also some opposition, the Tawheed meaning finishing graves and leveling them down, <laughs> things like that. And then we discuss Hakimiya. Ignoring that Hakimiya is the peak and the, the, the spinal cord of Tawheed, and the brain of Tawheed.
and that's why the secular distributing secularism is, is, is shirk and hakimiya. The seculars are not discussing there's two deities or something or, or something with wings flying. They, they're not bothered about that. They say maybe, maybe not. One God, two gods, well, it's not bothered. So, Running Madhuri, the state, fix up your secular salafis. Declaring good and evil is for us. That's it. We are the sovereign, the ultimate sovereign, or the people, or the human mind, or whatever they feel, make, give it a philosophical cover up. And, and paint. It's ultimately, it is not Allah, he's the ultimate sovereign. It gets really ridiculous because even, for example, I have no bayah to Saudi. Saudi, if me, my family, every single one of us were to beg, we can't become Saudi citizen. Yet, if I was to say my MBS is a gimp, is a scumbag, apparently that's Khuruj, despite the fact he's not even my ruler. How can I have a bayah? It's not, not even physically if they're possible. Saying that, if they're saying that because they think they're, they're, because they're only one ruling by Islam and they, they're automatic bayah on everyone, I don't know what, how they structure that. I have no idea how they structure that. But definitely leave that, the one in Saudi Arabia, and have, 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 have nationality and so on. That's the definition of Khuruj is faulty. It's definitely faulty. We have, we have just said what Khuruj is. We mentioned the story of this mysterious man. We have mentioned uh, we mentioned a hadith about Khawarij, which are tens of them. We mentioned only one of them, actually. But the tens of them, all of them said they read the Quran, they don't digest it. They uh, they uh, exit the the the, uh, the community or the deen. It's your, the word deen is there. But the word deen could be meaning a community, could be the allegiance, could be having several meanings. The word deen is not only religion or, or creed, no. like like an arrow exiting the, the bow. And they kill the believers and leave the, the pagans. That's what the, And the Prophet said, if I reach him, if I find them, if I meet them, I will exterminate the people of Ad. And he's saying, commenting on the Khoisara, not the story of this mysterious, but the story of the Khoisara is Mutawatr, as well established. Nobody arguing about his establishment. When the Khoisara told him, Muhammad, you're unjust in distributing some, some gold. And the messenger said, who is just if Allah and the Messenger are not just? And Umar wanted to kill him, the Prophet prohibited him from killing him. And then he commented that <coughs> and said, when, if, if I catch them when they come out, there's one in front of you now that's not coming out. Even telling the Messenger, you are unjust. Plain and clear kufr is not khuruj. Khuruj, when the, but, uh, the, uh, the Messenger is, is blabbering nonsense, if I live until I see them, then I'll exterminate them. It's one of them here. Exterminate him? No. When they come out with a sword. This is so obvious. And so plain. But these people are just, mo just mockery of uh, sane human being. Uh, and mockery of the Sunnah. And mockery of Quran. Just to bring it back to current events as well. I mean, to summarize, this reason to summarize I've just had... quickly, at the, the mockery. This, several of these statements are statement of kufr in themselves, but they are, we are not declaring them kafir because that a statement of kufr can be uttered by someone who is blind, who is mentally deranged, who does not connect things properly. But if he connects properly and persists, then he becomes a kafir in himself, in his per, per individual capacity. But the statements are statement of kufr. Which specific uh, statements? These statements they say that even Kirsad, the ruler is Khuruj. Because it's because not it's the Khuruj is defined by a hadith mutawatira. So it's, it's effectively, if knowingly, and unknowingly, uh, they, if they you have dispute with the ruler, then then defer to Allah and his messenger. That's not the way Khuruj is treated in the Quran and Sunnah. The Khuruj is treated and, and fighting the community is treated. In the Majda, Allah didn't have one Allah or Sulu and you cut the law, you saw the way the, 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 the punishment of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger. That's the one who depart the community and fight. They're the one who will be killed. That's Khuruj. That's Muharaba. But so the, merely but speaking the, out. We know the word Khuruj is very sensitive for Muslims and wakes memories of the people that are fighting Ali ibn Talib and he killing them. They play this game, making association. And this is a classical trick by all deviants and by all people who want to spread an, an, a, 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 a mischief. Like, for example, when, uh, when when people are discussing, for example, punishment for, uh, let's say, for, for fornication. Say, punishing love? You just rename fornication into love. 
It's a trick is used everywhere in every region and every ideology. That's a classical trick. We should not be played at Khuruj have its khuruj in the Sharia sense has uh, has specific in language meaning ecstatic room. Khuruj from the room going out of the room. But that's not what obviously meant. Nobody meaning that. Or khuruj like uh, Jamaat al Tabri say they're going for khuruj meaning going from their own homes and city, going for da'wah for three days or forty days or something like that. That's 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 not that they don't mean that. They mean criticizing the Lura or the, telling him uh, something off without pulling the sword and the uh, uh, that's not khuruj. That may be disobedience, that may be breaking the covenant, maybe something is maybe as bad as khuruj, but it's not khuruj. I mean, just, just, to, just to really hammer this point home, what Sajid Lippman specifically said, it's really way off the mark. He, for example, this brother Riyadh did this, this um, video where he's talking about somebody who's declaring allegiance to King Charles. And he explained how that's, you know, um, Allah's the Hakim, et cetera, et cetera. And then and he made the false correlation with that and uh, this, this person basically Khwarij, just for having that mentality. And then his book, Tahrir, for example, by extension, saying that they're Khwarij, when they've never no, no, no. This, advocated. This, 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 one, this one, I think this one is not in, inside, the, inside the frame of Islam. Because you cannot. No, you cannot no, no, sorry, sorry. Of course, all, this, all this person you, sincere, all, but he's all not, what you can not say, familiar. All what you can say, I have a covenant of security with King Charles. I'm living in the domain. I oh, that guy. I don't re attack him. I don't uh, kill his population. He doesn't attack me. He doesn't take my, my money unworthy. But I'm not alleged to him in the sense that if he calls me to join the army and fight with, that I'm obliged to do that. That's the meaning of allegiance. I don't. I cannot have allegiance. I have only a limited covenant of security. There's a, you could call that some part of allegiance, but because of uh, you need it for self protection, according to the ayah and the taqwim of tuqat. But. You may, you may you may technically call it allegiance in the sense because you behave as if you are the citizen who have allegiance to a genuine citizen who have allegiance to the king, for example. But only in that sense, the, the word allegiance. Only in that sense. If it means more than that, like an allegiance to a Muslim ruler, who are criticizing him or, or fighting him, whatever for whatever reason is khuruj, he is mistaken. If, so you fight him, if you fight him breaking the covenant or do a terrorist act, breaking the covenant, for example, what they call this in Britain, then you are breaking the covenant. Your covenant break, but it's not khuruj. There's something else. It's as bad as khuruj, but it's not khuruj. These things have Sharia definitions. You have to stick to them. You cannot mix the Sharia upside down. So and just you think you get away. So just for Because for you want to appeal to that, but tell you why they want to appeal to the Muslim feeling that Khawarij, the one fought Ali ibn Talib, caused all this major catastrophe. Because if they wouldn't have diverted the attention of Ali ibn Abi Talib and fought against him and drained some of his resources, he would have finished the, the Munafiq Kafir Muawiyah. That's what in people's mind generally. So it brings association which is extremely negative. That's the reason they use it, but it's not Khuruj. So if I violate my covenant of security with the brother, go out and watch the street, nobody, and kill a policeman, I'm not allowed to that because they've gone to security. Because they have the protection, they don't kill me, I don't kill them. They don't attack me, they don't attack them. Just to clarify this video, so this video originally, this brother was commenting on a person who's an MP and he's making the oath of allegiance. And then the contention was about his use of the word uh, of Translating his full name that people know. We, we have nothing to hide. We have a structured point of view with this argument. Mm -hmm. Legally and, and, and Sharia wise. Legally mm -hmm. in the British system and Sharia wise. What you have here as a, as a Muslim, even if you're born in Britain, you don't have. You're not allowed as a Muslim to have full allegiance. You have only a limited one, which is called the covenant of security, which bars you from certain things. If you do them, you are breaking the covenant of security. That's not Khuruj. Khuruj, the... Khuruj is exiting from the Ummah and going back fighting it with the sword. That's Khuruj. Exiting from the Ummah. Not even, ex even, not even fighting the ruler. We have the hadith, for example. The Messenger of Allah said, Abu Huraira narrates, the Messenger of Allah said, Ramadan to Ramadan, Jum'ah to Jum'ah, Salah to Salah, the exp expiration of the sins in between. We know from other hadiths, minor sins, not a major sins. And then he remained silent for a little bit, and then he said, except for three. Abu Rai said, I knew that he must receive revelation, reminding him you have to mention something to clarify. 
إذا كسبت ناقص الصفقة وترك شرك بالله شرك وإني كفر وناقص الصفقة وترك السنة. They said شرك بالله we know what شرك بالله we don't need to say but it's ناقص الصفقة breaking the بيعة or breaking the the deal صفقة is deal breaking the deal or or this yeah the breaking ناقص is the best word is ناقص الصفقة. So enough the suffer that you make bay'ah to an imam and then you turn back and fight him with your sword. So even fighting with your sword is not the safqa. And then what's what's tarq sunnah? Tarq sunnah that you exit the community and fight the Muslim with your sword. So even that's tarq sunnah and huruj, but not not the safqa. So tell the people, stop it. Your game is over. It's exposed. The hadith are here. And we're working with them and we'll build all their channels and all weddings and exposing who played games with the hadith from the classical scholars following his either mischievously or stupidly or being blinded by his ideology like Ahmed bin Hanbal cut many tales of the hadith. Most of the hadith with making having injunction about how to confront bad rulers and so on, they have usually a tale what to do, when to fight them or not. That tale is usually cut in the Mushnat. You find it in Bukhari, you find it here, you find it here, you find it here. But in the Muslim, it's cut. We'll expose that also. The Madkhali, they remind me of the Yehud. You know, when they exactly. cover the... Exactly. They, and... they do the following. The Yehud will not work. First of all, they write the book of uh, 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 books with all writing and claims from Allah. So they, they make definition and they make uh, writing, essentially, and claim that's exactly what, what the uh, uh, Quran and Sunnah is saying. We're just translating it just in an easy language for the people. Essentially saying this is from Allah, essentially. In time past the Jews, they were, because the relation was coming continuously, they could write books and claim. They can, for example, in the book of Jeremiah, for example, in the appendix of it or a later part of it, it claims that after the exile and after the punishment, Allah will make a covenant will stay forever for Israel. Everyone will be happy. We know this is a fabrication. Covenant was not renewed and they never stayed happy and the Roman came and kicked their butt. We know that. So it's a fabrication. So that is genuinely attributed to Jeremiah. To that level, it's not possible in Islam because Quran is protected and the Sunnah in totality is protected. But still, some of them fabricate a hadith. One of the fabrications, usually Shami, follower of Bani Umayyah and so on, uh, an interesting hadith. I put it aside so one day shall we analyze it and present it to everyone. He says, obey the rule or whatever, even if they order ma'asiyah. So imagine so the, the audacity of the one who fabricated this hadith. Because in Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you meet Allah, imagine, you meet Allah and you say, our Lord, no injustice, say, you know just what they say, sir, your messenger told us that we should obey. We have the benefit and the reward for obedience and the ruler will have the punishment for their misdeed. You say, they're right, I'm going to do that. That's a blatant kufr fabrication. So we have that also. Because if you say it, hadith is from Allah then. So we have that. <laughs> these madkhali did not reach that level. And they don't dare bring that hadith out. Trust me. <laughs> we are still better than some of the scholars in time of Bani Umayya with these madkhali. <clears throat> Secondly, taking things out of context. If you take things out of context, then you twist the word from its meaning because in the context shows the meaning. If you take them out or cut part of the context, then you have twisted the meaning. And the Jews are famous. Both even in simple verbs and sentences and in structured information by taking something out of context and change the wording. Give me things that that's the, uh, declaring these things which are not khuruj. Maybe they're serious. I'm not saying they're not serious, but they're not khuruj. It's not the word khuruj, is not for that. Tark al sunnah, yes, is khuruj, but not nakt al sabqa. The Messenger Allah came with precise wording, unfairly from Allah. We have to stick for them, otherwise, the religion will become, will become a salad. And then kufr will enter. Tikula will come, donkeys will come, pigs will come, everyone enter. It will become an open garden, everyone can graze there. 
Nicki Minaj will come, which is happening now. Halloween. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so that's that's that they have this. So have these all these characters to use. And the Prophet warned from that. He won't. You never famous the hadith. You will follow the, the the methods of the previous people, even if they go in the lizard hole. And then another narration is not by many sahab, by the way, it's mutawatir. The meaning is mutawatir. And another one, even if one of them have fornicated his mother publicly, you someone of you would be doing that. So mention <coughs> the example he mentioned Aisha <coughs> is visual and extreme, so that everyone understands, even the simplest Bedouin. He would not have said if they would have changed the Quran or changed words and so on. That's so too sophisticated. But this example is clear. If someone even uh, committed zina with his mother publicly someone of you will do the same you will follow that say uh, which people jews and christians say yes in another narration he mentioned persian and the romans most likely in matter of state craft and running the state the, wh why did he mention that just to tell the future no to warn be alert don't follow their ways keep distance keep keep watching cautiously and meticulously don't fall in, the, in these traps but the people decided to not to listen. Unfortunately, because this is a domain of testing. But does not justify that, even if it's a domain of testing. You ought not have done that. And you will be asked for that and you'll be accounted for that. So it's really almost like the Jews and, and, and also in other aspects like the Christian. Going extreme in piety, abstaining from things which is just so fearful and so on. Feeling things without evidence and so on. Calling it wara, being piety. You know. Avoid this, this is suspicious, this is suspicious. Yes, if you don't know about something it's suspicious, or you have no certitude, yes. But in itself, there's nothing un unknown. Maybe for an individual, like the hadith, famous hadith, halal bayin and haram bayin, and there's in between things which may be confusing for certain people. If it's confusing for you, then avoid it. But halal bayin is haram bayin. For a scholar, it should not be. should be able to sort the confusion and then guide the general public about the confusion, not the opposite. Add, add confusion to them, to misguide them, and to benefit the rulers. My, my statement is that <coughs> most leaders of the madkhalis <coughs> are most likely munafiq out of the fold of Islam. Unfortunately, I have to say that the followers are blind idiots. That's the best we can say about them. Otherwise, they would be kafir. So it's better to be an idiot. I don't care that to be a kafir, in my perception at least. I don't know what's your, your taste in that. But I prefer a thousand to be a donkey than to be a kafir. At least don't be a stupid and uh, a supposedly a stupid innocent animal. Sheikh, uh, your kitab uh, Hakimiya. Having read, um, gone to two thirds of it, it destroys all of this. Honestly, yes, it's in Arabic and Sajid Lipman going only to Mutawat oh, al Hadith yeah, and to Quran. It's essentially Quran, it's all the necessity of reason. We use a hadith as just, just a footnote and clarification because most hadith in that area, most not all, are ahad. And I wouldn't go and say something fundamental just with ahad, although some of them are really to the level of Mutawat. And the reasoning is profound. I saw the, all the all the yeah. all the all the discussion on it. It's, so, it's it's, solid. Uh, so uh, please, uh, you and the other shabab should uh, uh, accelerate in completing the review of the translation, and uh, hopefully this will be, because I think the English reading public is is more 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 sophisticated and more willing to read than the Arabic public. Unfortunately, we have our book of uh, Hakimiya in the market now. I will have an edited version coming, a more polished one, inshallah. But the one is for twenty years. It doesn't seem to be anybody bothered about really reading it or rebutting it or or uh, advising us about errors in it and so on. Nobody seems unfortunately, which is very unfortunate. So the or at least the Arabic section of the Ummah is is, is uh, seems to be in general in deep in deep sleep snoring. They are like that, that mysterious man who just says al hello and then proceed. He doesn't need to sit in a halaqa. He doesn't need to make a book of massage. We have everything. We have, we have, we have, uh, we have as, as the, the people of Mecca say, uh, we got the, the wolf from its tail. Why we should bother about something else? And this is the way of downhill.
That's the reason when many time I hear someone wrote a book or something new in that area, I try to appropriate it and see it. Maybe he added a new angle. Maybe he detected some mistake in our link or something which we will have overlooked. And we have corrected many things. You see some of our recent writing corrects many other older mistakes, which we were doing for 25, 30 years, trusting some old writings. But then find there's evidence, compelling evidence that it was wrong and we corrected it. Set, set for it. Most, most most significant one is that you just mentioned that and then we will conclude because I think we took a very long time. Most significant one is the issue with when we were going to rebut the uh, Daesh, Da'i, the Islamic State of Iraq before it became Islamic State of Iraq and Sham. So it was Da'i before it became Daesh. That they can establish state by forceful and force the people in Bayah and all these things, which is obviously very the, the principle of Shura, the principle of the authority of the Ummah. And, uh, no, and they, uh, they, they claim that we established a state that said the domain is empty. So since we established it, we, we are the one who created it. We have to enforce it. And we should have an Islamic state. That's the claim. Sounds very logical. But that's not the way I thought at the time that the Messenger Allah established the Islamic state. And the usual argument is that uh, uh, Talib al-Nusra and so on. So I studied Talib al-Nusra to show that he insisted that whoever give him Nusra is uh, is uh, an, uh, people who have sufficient authority and self-protection like he rejected the Rusna of Al-Tufail ibn Amr uh, because uh, Ibn Amr uh, Dawsi because uh, although he has a high mountain and massive fortification but his own people do not seem to be giving him support so you don't have support you don't have Nusra your own people must, must, must accept that must be standing behind you and behind me otherwise it's not so you cannot enforce yourself on the people in Talib al-Nusra and then during that study I noticed that our perception that Talib al-Nusra is the stage, as Hizb al said, of establishing state is actually mistaken. He was looking for Nusra. He was not looking for, for leadership. And the bay'ah of bay'at al-Harb, of Abad ibn Samad, the famous bay'ah, which contained the phrase of Kufr al actually enshrines that he is not the head of state. And this is not establishing a state yet. The state was established later, as we have shown in Sahih al Madina. So I recognized this, and at the end I said, we were mistaken. His theory was mistaken. The Ishtahad was wrong. We have to correct it. Evidence is here. That's the reason if anyone writing something in these areas, I try to get the book. And try to go through it as quickly as possible. Maybe there's something new. Maybe there's a new twist. Maybe there's some deepening of a point. But these people are deciding, no, 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 no. This is Mubtadi. Don't read him. They will never achieve anything. Okay, show us your reading of the Quran that you have any depth. This blood hunt is completely nil. Zero, zilch, nothing. I think we should conclude now. But my, my perception just... is that the Madkhali party, or the, the most people will now call him the party of the government, or the government mm -hmm. party. The, I like, I like the leader because... and the sophisticated one, if there's anyone who can be called sophisticated as a precaution, like is that Rabi al Madhari and so on, these are people we know there's intelligence service agents, these are they are traitors. And most likely, I'm sorry to say that, but my person I hate to use that term. But for Rabi and this elk, I doubt that they are in the fold of Islam. I think they are Munafir Kafir. The follower, as I said again, was stressing, they are just blind uh, brainwashed idiots. Luckily, so they are not Kafir. But they're, 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 they're what they adopt and they think is a statement of kufr and they should depart from that. They should study it and get rid of it. Does not exonerate them that they are stupid and, uh, because they're still having enough human brain. Unless they don't have a brain, then they should they belong in the mental institution. Not in the YouTube and discussing with other people. If you are able to discuss with other people, you should be able to go and review these things and go a little bit more thoroughly than this rubbish. Sheikh, if I just summarize it briefly, so this was considered to be an opening salvo to people of uh, Saudi ilk yeah. and to assist people like Brother Brohaji, uh, Mohammed Hijab, to basically destroy and, uh, this yeah. nar narrative. And, and give them a better angle. Like we said, some of them are still having some stains from the Wahhabi and, and Madhali without their noticing. I made a comment recently, just let me conclude that, because they say we conclude that, just the final and we even stop. I, I noticed uh, that even they translate, uh, there's no deity but Allah, 
there's no, there's no deity worth of worship but Allah. And they made a comment in a video of Brother uh, Muhammad Hijab say stop this translation. Because this translation go to the f falsehood that worship is independently defined from deity. No. Worship is in its essential meaning as we argue in the book of Tawheed even with, with precision of mathematical equations. In chapter 7 I think we have discussed the matter in the form of mathematical equations to that level of sophistication with the exact level of, 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 of work is that worship meaning attributing divinity to something it's the attribution of divinity is worship it's not standing or or lighting candles or charity or salah and so on you could glean that if just someone have a little bit of brain and go deeper in the statement Allah said about the long discussion which is depicted in the Old Testament between Allah and Musa it's summarized in the Quran very precisely because there's no need for that long discussion. At that time of Musa, it was needed because even a divine name was not established yet. And he mentioned what the name used by Ibrahim and so on. That's Old Testament. Go and see it. And I, I summarized that actually in the, the book of Tawheed. In the Quran, summarized for December, Inni an Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa akhim al dhikri. I am Allah. Now we have a divine name. So no need to go about Y, H, W, what it means, Yehovah. I am the one who is ever or things like that is all that Allah contain all of that there's no deity beside me so worship me for me and establish prayer to remember me so establish prayer to remember me is not, is not worship something else so what's worship but we will usually say so prayer is worship no is not worship meaning attribute all divinity to me there's no other deity just reinforcing the word la ilaha illa ana this is a statement of fact how it reflects on your side, that's it, a fact. Independent of you, even if Musa doesn't exist, the Holy Ones doesn't exist, there's no deity beside Allah. But there is a Musa, finite being, with brain, with capabilities, with understanding. How should he, his, his response to this fact that there's only one deity? Is acknowledging it and attributing the deity only to Allah and rejecting attributing to anybody else. That's worship. So the so it is a coin. The, 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 the ontological existence side is there is no divinity except no, no deity except Allah. The human side worship only Allah. It's the same thing, but seen from the you see what I mean from two sides. The side of the fact itself and how to respond and deal with the fact. That's it. Salah is uh, certain acts in the case of Musa is not like our acts. It may be like ours, maybe different. The Salah of the Jews, maybe the one which we had adopted by Musa, I don't know, is standing in front of uh, of something and doing the famous movements. That's Salah. Certain movements. What's the purpose of it? Is it worship? No. It is just to internalize and, and remember Allah SWT. Because our mind cannot be present by having Allah continuous in presence. So you have to have certain time in the day, three times, five times, in which you connect with him to get a spiritual hearing, a spiritual boost. That's it. So it's an enactment of the command of the day, divine. It's enactment. The, 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 the worship aspect of the salah is that you, you do the salah the way you are ordered to do. Blatant example, when Adam was created, he was ordered, go in the, or, or permitted to do whatever he wants in the parade, eat everything, do everything, go naked. No, no, nothing like that. Only one command: don't touch this tree. Was he not worshipper? Did not fulfill the purpose of existence? He didn't fulfill. That's all the deen, and this is enough. That's the complete deen at that time. Completely perfect. Enough. More than enough. Only one command, or only one prohibition, even. Nothing at all, except this one. And still he's a complete worshiper. And even a strongest point of view that he was even a prophet. But he knew that there's no date except Allah. He knew it. And he attributed all divinity to Allah. Even in a simple way. Like the great spirit, like the, we see by the Native Americans, the great spirit, or by the Native... Uh, uh, the native, uh, the natives of, of Australia, who the, some Western people claim they don't have a the concept of God because the, West, the Western people are stupid. They don't know. They themselves don't know the, the, the concept of what they have. They have, but they connect with them through dreams and the previous generations through intermediate spirits. But there's some some overwhelming universal spirit, and there's no other one. 
That's it. That's all the way. And they attribute that to him. That's the worship to worship. So he's perfectly worshiper. And has no other acts to do except that one. That's all the deen he has at this time. Okay, I think we overloaded Great. the listener and then we'll come back, shall we see what people will come with. And uh, yep. we'll see what will be the reaction, which questions will come, and we address them. And, and of course, we will have then, based on the question, if we get them early enough before that, I can't give them the hadith about how to deal with the rulers and so on. And, uh, and like uh, in the Arabic version of accounting the rulers, we don't have it in, in English yet. I think so. We did not start the translation, unfortunately. I but it. I can I can summarize some of them and give mm -hmm. you the, how many is now are there. Just this number. I will not read that because this will be volume. This will fill easily a, 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 a reasonable size volume. I'll just give you the. Is it complete? Is it, is it is there, is, there, is your draft complete now? Hmm? Or Mahasbir Akam? Is it Mahasbir Akam? Uh, I, I, Arabic I, I, complete. The old version is excellent, but I'm improving it and updating it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no there's no translations for that at the moment no, at no, all. That's I said I said to the translator to hold back because mm -hmm. I think we can do more substantial rearrangement and improvement mm -hmm. and better mm -hmm. study of Isnat. Because that one uh, 20 years ago, which was very good, by the way, is relatively simple minded. It takes many a hadith at face value uh, without discussing their wording uh, more thoroughly. Was, was enough. But if we discuss more thoroughly, things become much sharper and would be more damaging and destroying for, uh, mm. for the Hanbali, Madkhali, Wahhabi, Madkhali, uh, uh, Bid'ah, heresy. This is genuinely heresy. The way they stand to the rulers is a genuine heresy. It undermines the meaning of Islam. You heard it here, folks. Open discussions can be facilitated. Yeah. Don't sit on this anytime, any place, anywhere. It's on the balls in your court. We will respond. So Sallallahu Sallam Barakan Abila Muhammad Subhanak Allah Mabi Hamdik Mr. Fulok and Tubu Ilaik. لا تنسى الإعجاب والاشتراك في القناة